All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends. And if you are a Muslim, please join us. You are more than welcome. Please respect yourself, speak nicely, and don't use bad words like donkey because the Prophet Muhammad used it. If you say it, the Muslim get offended. Don't use the F word because the Prophet Muhammad used it, but yet the Muslims get offended by it. And don't use the word. <coughs> Uh, because uh, the Muslims uh, use it, uh, Prophet use it, and he... So, only Muhammad have a license to use bad language. However, we are Christians, we will not use bad language. But using the word donkey, when I say it, I mean somebody is a stupid, like a donkey. Otherwise, donkey are smarter than many human beings. Before we start, you might see sometime, some silly people who claim to be Christians, they come to our chat and they say they are debating each other. About what? Uh, I will give you an example. A few minutes ago, somebody posted... I was refuting Christian friends about that uh, the communion turned into blood and water, the blood and wine. I mean, this, this is how silly. You see, we are trying to save souls, bring them to Christ, and they are debating if the wine turned really into blood or not. Bunch of silly people. They have no brain and they have no dignity. Your debate is silly. Because if it turn or it does not, it will not change anything. And that's why sometimes I have to use the word donkey, even with those who claim to be Christians. And instead of focusing and bringing Muslims to Christ and saving their life, they are busy debating. When Jesus said, this is my blood, or this is, must be the blood, or I'm going to refute the Christian prince, this is blood, this is not juice no more. My friend, you refute me or not, you are stupid. Because it's not going to make a difference. You can give any interpretation you wish. But what does this have to do with bringing people to Christ? But because you are serving the devil, you are working hard to divide the Christians over something really not important. The Lord one day will come and he will tell us what he meant exactly, if it is going to turn really for real or not. However, until now what we see that uh, the juice is still juice. We are not drinking blood. Until you prove the opposite. So, I never spoke about this topic before, by the way, but the people are silly, stupid, I don't know what, I mean, they are silly, like, silliness itself. And instead, of, instead of being missionary for God, bring, bringing people to believe in the Savior, they are busy talking about, is this water will turn to blood, or is going to stay water? <laughs> Like the Mohammedan, is the camel urine? It means advice to the Christians. Please refrain yourself from silly debates about silly argument, which will not change anything. Will not change anything. You will see someone debating other Christians saying, Do you believe in the rapture? My friend, you believe or not, he believe in Jesus the Christ, the Savior. And God, our Lord, he will do as he wish, not as you understand. So why you are debating about something will happen according to God, not according to you, according to, 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 to me. Let us say I have wrong understanding and you have a correct, but this is not to change anything because this is a, a, a debatable issue. But there is no point of this debate. God will do what God do. In judgment day, you will see what God will do. And you will see and I will see. So there is no need to debate about it. What about we focusing about being people of righteousness, serving God, bringing people to Christ, and then give what to God to God. Let God do his what he need to do. Right? God will do what God he will do. It's not your interpretation. It's not my interpretation. It is him who decide. All right? So stay away from silly uh, argument because there is many silly people there. They are just waiting for a silly time. They want to kill time. They have no life. Here we are bringing people to Christ. We are bringing millions of Muslims to leave the cult of Muhammad and we are bringing them to Jesus. You keep busy about the drink of Jesus. He said, this will be my blood. Go and be busy with it. For me, I have better news for the Muslims. That Jesus, he loved them and he want to save them. So you stay, you stay there debating about it for the coming 10 centuries. I mean, your grand-grand-grand-grand-grand-grandfather was debating about it, and now you are doing the same. Yet none of you brought one, one Muslim to Christ. 
Do you understand the hypocrisy of those people? Him and his grand, 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 grandfather, they are debating with the other person, the grand, 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 grandfather, about the same issue. But none of them brought one person to Christ because they are silly people. So those people take them in the side and dump them. The Lord, when they will ask them, what you brought to me? How many souls you saved? Oh, you convince him that the, the drink I drank became a blood. That's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, so today our topic is about, did Jesus really say he is God? And did Jesus say, like we quoted in the previous video uh, from the gospel, Jesus saying, I am the living God. The Muslim, they say, oh, different translation. It doesn't say, I am the living God. Well, we are translation, the Bible, this is a translation for the Aramaic Bible. <clears throat> However, we are going to show the Muslims, the, you know, uh, uh, sorry, I don't want to say to show the Muslims. I want to show those who have dignity that it's not what the Bible say is the problem. It is the Muslim. It doesn't matter what the Bible say, they will refuse. I mean, obviously, everybody knows that the whole Bible is speaking about Jesus is God. And yet you are coming to say to me, Jesus never said he's God. But because they have no dignity, it doesn't matter what the Bible say. So if Jesus says, I am God, worship me, are you going to worship him if the Bible says so? No, anyway. So the argument is just for our argument. The same as some silly Christians who argue just to argue. Those are both are serving the devil. The silly Christians who they are fake Christians, who divide the Christians and they keep busy fighting each other, they are the same as the Muhammad, and both their, their father is the father of all lies. For a person who believe in God, he spread love, not div division. He invite people to Christ, not make people run away from Christ over silly topics. If you notice today, the Muslim, they call me, they said, okay, which one I want to follow, the Protestant or the Catholic? <clears throat> Well, the answer is very simple. There's nothing is called Protestant or nothing is called Catholic. There's someone, he is our master. The Bible says clearly, there is only one master. His name is Jesus the Christ. As simple as that. Anyone else is not our master. No bishop, no priest, no Christian prince. Who is a Christian prince? No one. You want to follow me? If you follow me, you are a fool. Who am I? I am a sinner like everybody. So, uh, when somebody speak his foolishness, well, let his foolishness speak. And every kind of debate have its own place. Let us say, if we are sitting as Christians together, and we are speaking with love and harmony that's wonderful but here we are fighting the cult of this now so you know that you are trying to bring division not unity that's mean you are serving the devil the quran chapter 5 verse 14 says it clearly that i will spread hatred and enmity between the christians until the judgment day and this is exactly those people who serve the devil they do if you are a catholic i love you as my brother in christ if you are a Protestant, you are my brother in Christ. If you are neither of them, but you believe in Jesus as your Savior, you are my brother in Christ. I don't care what church you go to. Why do I want to care? What I care is your faith, what you believe. Do you believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that Jesus the Christ, he died for us on the cross? Do you believe that he is the only Savior we have? Do you believe he's coming back? So, if you believe, you are a believer. That's it. The church name you go to, that's not my business. Okay, my friend. Uh, uh, Sam is in the chat. Want to join us? Do you want to join in life? Uh, uh, Sam, are you there? Uh, I don't see Sam. Where is Sam? <clears throat> well, actually, if Sam is here, that, what, that, will, uh, that will make it easier for me. Because he, uh, he is better in, uh, in English, for sure. My English is not good, as you know. You know, speaking about the Bible is a very, 
it's a it's a it's a highly topic. It's a it's a it's a deep topic. Not like the silly stupid Quran. I mean, the Quran is a book singing rabbi music, but it's a silly rabbi music. There's nothing there. But the Bible is a very deep book, and such a book needs somebody to be focused and to think carefully and to observe and enjoy. So reading the gospel is the same as watching heaven. Okay, Sam, I will, I will, I will, uh, uh, <clears throat> I will, I will open my Skype later. Just give me some time, please, and I will let you join us if uh, if it's okay for you. So look at this. Have you ever heard of a Muslim making fun of Christians believing that Mary she was a virgin? When she gave birth to Jesus, never. Why? Is it because it's logical for Muslims? I mean, it's not logical in Islam. In Islam, nothing logical, even including that Mary she was a virgin. Why? Because what is that? What what is the point of that? And why only Mary? And why only Jesus? There is no answer. But in Christianity, it makes sense. Mary is the mother of a person. Who have no father in this earth okay why would the christian believe that this is the son of god that's wonderful but in islam why mary she have a son he have no father anyone can tell me they have no answer it doesn't make sense so the thief muhammad he take things he put it in the quran and because it's in the quran no muslim dare to question it Otherwise, you will see the Muslims calling me all day long. Hey, Christian friends, <laughs> you Christian believe that Mary she was a virgin. <laughs> Actually, there is a donkey from uh, uh, from Indonesia. If you remember him, what what his name, guys? The one I made the video for him. He said in his video, and this is why he was so upset because I made him shish kebab. He said the Christians are copying this from the Greek mythology. But the stupid, he, this is in your book, you donkey. He was saying that the Christians are copying that uh, a woman, she gave a child birth and she is a virgin. And this is from the Greek mythology. But this is in his Quran. So when he saw my videos, he started crying and going screaming. I don't know what his name. I don't know. I forgot what his name. Yeah, he look he look funny like me, you know. <clears throat> Somad, his name is Somad. Okay, okay, he, his name is so mad. This is explain why he was mad. Actually, I, I I I never thought about it. By the way, that he is mad because of his name, not because of my videos. So mad. Eh, makes sense. Okay. So Mister Somad got busted, spanked by Christian Prince, and then he went so mad more. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let us go to the topic. First of all, why even we are debating about Jesus being God? Isn't this a good question? People, why we are talking about debating about if Jesus is God or not? I mean, obviously, the name of Christ is extremely high to the point. We are debating with the Muslims about what? If he is God or not. What does that mean? You see, while we are debating with Muslims about Muhammad, that he is a fraud, accused by Muslims to steal panties, have sexual relationship with the children, a thief and a criminal and a liar, he even broke the command of God, of his God, many times in the Quran, according to the Quran, as an example, the chapter of At-Tahreen, verse number one. So, while we are debating about such a behavior of a madman, his name is so mad, Muhammad, we are debating about Christ being God. I mean, how this person amazing he is to the point people think he's God. Let us say, for the sake of argument, he is not God. But imagine he is so good to the point billions believe he's God. Do you see the different direction of the debate? 
So the Muslim, they spend the whole day to find their prophet name in our book, and yet they say our book is corrupted. And here you see the corrupt mind and the corrupt logic. How you say our book is corrupted, and then you try to find the name of your prophet in our book. That because they are bankrupt and they are desperate looking for anything to prove Muhammad is a prophet. And by the way, I believe that Muhammad is a prophet. He prophesied a lot of things. He, as an example, he said the Roman will win the war after the war happened and they won. Okay, I will make a prophecy. Guys, there is a disease, it's called Corona. It's going to start in China and then it's going to go to Europe and then it's going to come to America. How do I know that? Uh, Christian Prince, but this has happened three, four months ago. Uh, brother, it doesn't matter. How I know that? It, it, it's all over the news. Uh, brother, it doesn't matter. You know? So, how Muhammad became a prophet, we do not know, except that he is a war monger, gang master, rapist, child molester, crazy man. All the reference in Islamic books even says that Muhammad was bewitched. Which make, him, which make him more funny because we have a bewitched prophet. If I'm walking in the street and I see Muhammad, and let us say I'm Zakir Naik in his time, what I will say to my prophet? It's an American prophet. Uh, <clears throat> who are you? My name is Zakir Naik. I'm prophet. I'm worried about you. Uh, what exactly? Why are you worried? I heard that you are bewitched. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I was. Uh, be, 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 be uh, what uh, 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 what you said? Bewitched, bewitched. Uh, uh, okay, but can you stay a little bit because there's corona? You are spitting at me. Excuse me, I have broken teeth, and all of my talk I talk like this. Uh, okay, but uh, how you know that I am bewitched? Prophet of Allah, the news is all over. And Sahih al Bukhari get you busted. Uh, Sahih al Bukhari he wrote there that I am bewitched. Exactly. Uh, and how many people they know now that I'm bewitched? All the world. And Muhammad saying to himself, oh boy, the whole world knows I'm crazy now. So are you saying to me that this is everybody know that I am bewitched and I hear voices? And exactly. And uh, like who else exactly when you say the whole world? Prophet of Allah, we have YouTube and we have Facebook and we have Twitter. Uh, what is that? Twitter. Uh, what, what does that mean? It is a tweet. I don't understand. What is that? Is that something new? Exactly. It's something new. It is kind of a tweet and tar, which means that like you use tara tara and with a to do. Uh, I think uh, I will pass this explanation. So, uh, how many people they knew right now that I am bewitched and crazy? I can say not many people. Uh, like, how much? Uh, not many people. Like, can you give me a number? Uh, I think I will, uh, the Sunni and the Sia and the Christian and the Dude and the Hindu and the Buddha and the Atheist and uh, and how much uh, people those they will count it, it's about uh, 7 billion 7 billion they know that I'm bewitched not too many thank Allah thank Allah I was worried that many people know more I mean the number is bigger exactly prophet and we protect you and we defend you always. We say that the Prophet was bewitched by the Jews. Uh, by the Jews, huh? Exactly. Uh, so, do people believe you? Uh, not too many. Uh, but, uh, okay, you know what? I hear voices right now. I have to go. <laughs> so, they have a guy who have the Muslim themselves, they say he was bewitched. The Muslim, they say he hear voices. The Muslims, they say, even the chapter of Al-Fatiha came to him when he was doing poo-poo and he flee and his underwear between his legs. And the angel, he called him at night when he was going out to do poo-poo, the prophet, he start running away. And this is supposedly the one will tell us if Jesus the Christ is God or not, with no witnesses. You see, even Islam says that if there is somebody, uh, when I get married, you need two witnesses at least. If, if somebody borrow money from somebody, you need two witnesses at least. When it's come to Jesus, Muhammad, he say anything he want, there's no witnesses. 
Not only Jesus, anything Muhammad, you say, there's no witnesses. Muhammad, he went to the seventh heaven in the top of a flying enemy. There's no witnesses. We believe it. That's it. Muhammad, he got visitors and they are angels and they chop his belly uh, <coughs> button and they chop his throat and then they install a dish of wisdom in his chest. They believe it. Why you believe? Because Muhammad says so. Not because it makes sense. No. Muhammad says so. It is so. So Jesus being God, it doesn't make sense. But having an angel coming from the seven galaxy, cutting the chest of the, the prophet of Islam, taking all the material inside, and then washing it with Zamzam and Clorox, and then put it back, and then he installed a dish of gold full of wisdom and faith inside his chest, makes sense. And the Muslims don't argue, don't, don't argue about that. I mean, it's, it's clear, it's true. It's true. I mean, why, why is it true? Uh, but uh, brother, uh, why Allah he need to do a surgery for the Prophet and install a dish of wisdom? Uh, because the Prophet obviously was a fool. You see, when you need adjustment and the adjustment about faith and wisdom, that's mean you don't have any. When somebody, he made a story for me saying that his God he sent two angels and the purpose is to do a plastic surgery to install wisdom and faith that's mean okay if i change my car, car battery why i change the car battery because simply is dead all right wonderful muhammad allah he changed his battery and he installed his battery supposedly is his faith and his wisdom why he did that because it's dead muhammad is a fool and he cannot be a prophet unless we make a surgery for him. This is what the whole story is saying to us. And to make the story more funny, the Muslim didn't debate about if really faith can come in dishes just because Muhammad he says so. Jibreel cut open the part of his body between his throat and the middle of his chest. Okay. Uh, and uh, took all the material he took all the material out out what is that man he took all the, the whole engine as simple as that so Zibril Zibril oh yeah Zibril yeah Zibril oh yeah Zibril so Zibril brother he brought the Caesar brother and he cut the chest of the prophet and he took all the material out and then, brother, he washed it with the water of Zamzam, as you see in the picture, brother. And then, brother, he put it back, brother. And, brother, he installed, he brought with him a dish of uh, gold, uh, a bowl of gold, full of belief and wisdom. If, 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 if. So, the Christian believe that Jesus is God because of his awareness doesn't make sense. Muhammad installing a dish of wisdom and faith in his chest, it makes sense. I mean, it's obvious. How in the world even can you can you argue about it? It's obvious. This is, a, this is always a, 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 a God always do that. Each time he want to take a messenger to heaven, he send angels, they cut his chest, and then they breathe the gold and, uh, you know, a tray, and the gold tray is full of belief and wisdom. And then he uh, push it uh, in his uh, 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 blood. And then, brother, it says here, uh, a bull, bull full of belief and wisdom was brought, and then the real stuff it, stuff his chest and throat blood vessels with it. Mean. <sighs> If we take the blood of the Prophet Muhammad to the laboratory, we will not find red sails, white sails, no brother. We will find faith and wisdom sails. Stuffed? What is that? Is that a cabbage? And this is makes sense for the Muhammad. Let's try not to laugh. Now we will go and see what does not make sense for the Muhammad about the Bible. Uh, in John 10, 
and this is the Aramaic Bible translation. It says here that Yeshua, he said to them, I am the living God, the gate of the folk. One of the Muslims, he said, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, all of us, we knew that uh, in English, uh, when it is saying I am in capital letter, it's about God. If it's not, it's not. My friend, in the Greek, uh, uh, in, sorry, in, in Aramaic and the Hebrew and Arabic, there is nothing called capital letter. None. It's not exist. So when you say I am, it's the same. Secondly, you make it capital letter or not, there's an easy way to find out what this I am is about. You see, when I say I am, and then I say something have to do with God only, that's mean I'm saying I'm God. Let us say for the sake of argument that the translation here, it says I am the living God. Eh, let us say uh, maybe it's not accurate as the Muslims they claim. Or even they are saying it's a lie. Okay. But he is saying he is the gate. The gate what? No one shall enter the heaven but by me. How we go to heaven by God. I am the good shepherd, but the Bible says only God is good. Jesus himself, he called himself good. Jesus himself, he questioned a person who said to him, you are good. He said to him, why you say I am good when you know that only God is good? So Jesus saying I am good is saying I am God. For the Jews believe that no one is good save God. Jesus said, repeatedly I am I am I am and then each time he say I am he is saying something have to do only with God when Jesus says I am the light <clears throat> how many people they can claim to be the light of the world <clears throat> actually let me show you a Muslim uh, comment give me a second <clears throat> I spoke too much today. My voice is tired. Let me open it so I can show you. Uh, the comment. Give me a second. Let us see the Muslim comment where it is. <clears throat> mm. <clears throat> where is the comment? Where is the comment? I'm just trying. Okay, I found it. Here we go. All right. This is the comment of this Muhammadan. Let me put it for you on the screen. His name is Asaddi. He said the Christian knew that I am and I am, which means I am capital are not the same meaning. We know the reason, the reason capital letter R used in the Bible. I am is God's name, but Muslims do not know that they refuse to learn about it. What we can do? Uh, no. What we can do? What do you mean what we can do? You see, if I say I am tall, obviously I'm not saying I'm God. If I say I am short, obviously I'm not saying I'm God. But if I say I am the light of the world, 
then I'm saying obviously I'm God a Muslim actually one of the comment I could not find it I don't know he uh, uh, I think he deleted because I told him I'm going to uh, respond to your comment he, I think he took it off uh, he said well if you compare between the Quran and the Bible you will see that the Quran says that Allah is the light of uh, this the, the, the earth and the heaven but Jesus says I am the light of the world uh, so uh, obviously Jesus is not God uh, my friend let us say what you're saying is a true but first of all uh, if we say that he is the light of this world that's mean he is the only salvation for the mankind and that make him God because here is not about just lighting uh, otherwise we have electricity my friend light here is about God he himself is our source of everything and the first thing here is meant is guidance and salvation which mean to be saved from going to hellfire so when a Muslim he tried to prove a point he come with a funny stupid argument sorry to say the word stupid but it is a stupid argument if we go in the Bible and I will quote some verses <clears throat> as an example John chapter 8 and we put it in the screen and I will use the, the translation which the Muslim did like to see supposedly they, suddenly they like uh, King James Version okay let us see what King James Version in chapter 8 John chapter 8 saying and let us see if this statement here saying that Jesus is God if you go down just to save time you will see the Messiah our Lord saying I am the light of the world but did he stop there no he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life so Jesus here is not only saying he is the light he is saying he is the light of life and he is the one who will give eternal life the one who follow me he will not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life okay who is this person who can give this you see if a person now in Islamic countries he say this sentence the Muslims will kill him immediately I am the light of the world he who follow me shall not walk in darkness they will kill him because he claimed to be God but when you make him read this verse he say no he's not saying he's God <laughs> do you notice the hypocrisy do you believe it is this a statement will cause your death Muslim if you say it in the Middle East if yes why because he claimed to be God now maybe we have wrong understanding maybe he's not claiming to be God he's just saying I'm the light of the world I'm the one who follow me he will not be in darkness and maybe he's saying because he believe in me he will go and uh, have eternal life maybe because he is teaching about God so how we can confirm that even though it's so clear for us if you read you will see clearly if we go a little bit down you will see they say it into him where is he the father hmm? because he's saying my father sent me and he witness of me so they told him okay who is your, who's your father where is your father Jesus said you neither know me neither know my father if you if if ye had known me you should know also my father and then Jesus continued making more clear proofs that he is God if we go down a little bit in the same chapter you will see the following
uh, if a person keep my co uh, command he will never see death how you can say that then they say the Jews they said to him now we know that thou hast a devil there is a devil on you Abraham is dead the prophet are dead and yet you are saying to us that the one who follow you will not taste death are do are thou greater than the father Abraham which is dead and the prophet are dead who makes though this the self Jesus said listen carefully Muhammadan if I honor myself my honor is nothing it is my father that honoreth me of whom you say that is your God and now let us focus a little bit yet you have not known him but I know him and if I should say I know him not I shall be a liar like unto you but I know him and I keep his saying your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad Jesus met Abraham how is that how Abraham he saw Jesus there is hundreds of years between them then said to the Jews and to him, <laughs> although you are not even 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. You see here, this is confirmed what we are saying, that Jesus saying that Abraham saw him. Correct? This is not our interpretation. The Jews, they make it clear. Okay, so you claim that you, Abraham, saw you and you saw uh, Abraham, <laughs> but you are not 50 years old. Jesus says to them, before Abraham, I am. Do you see the word I am there, Muhammadan? Here I want to stop. The Muslim they say that when Jesus says I am, he is not saying he is God. Right? I am here stand for what? Stand for existence. I mean, anyone who speaks simple, uh, any language you speak, you know that he is saying he exists and he exists before Abraham. But not only that, the Messiah is saying clearly that he is over the time. Time doesn't count for him. His existence has nothing to do with his birth. And I challenge any Muslim to explain to me how he was exist before Abraham. If Abraham is the grand, grand, grandfather of all the Jews, how yet Jesus the Messiah saying before Abraham, I am. What does I am stand for, Muslims? Do we have any Muhammad in the chat? He can give us opinion. What does I am stand for? Guys, just give me a break a little bit. We will call Sam, don't worry. Sam, he will explain more than me. Any Muslim can tell us what this I am stand for? You see, you claim, you Muslim, that Jesus never said his God. Okay, how he exists before Abraham? I want to know. Jesus is a prophet, supposedly according to Islam, sent to the Jews. But when Abraham was exist, there was no Jews. Do you know that? Not only that, he is saying he before even Abraham is exist. Who was before Abraham? Noah, Adam, before all of them. Yet they say to you that Jesus saying, I am not God. And the word I am does not stand for his God. But there is no other interpretation for this. If I say to you, no, did Jesus say that he is exists before the whole universe? Yes, he said that. He mentioned clearly that. And we are not quoting that a disciple of Jesus saying that this is Jesus the Messiah speaking. Because the Muslim, they might say to you, oh, uh, Paul. And by the way, 
why your prophet never mentioned Paul in a bad way? Actually, in the early Islam, Muslims praise uh, Paul that he is the disciple of Jesus. Even their books claim that the Messiah appeared to Paul and he made him blind, blind, which is total agreement with the Bible. So a bunch of fools, they don't understand their own belief and they are trying to make us understand our own belief. I will make a few more points and we will call our brother Sam as long as he is with us so he can give uh, maybe more, more details and explain better than me uh, about uh, those ideas. Uh, the Messiah, he go even more far than this. As an example, in John 10, 30, he says that him and God is one. Who is the who is the father for the Christians? They're God. I mean, you do not need to be a genius to know that this is what the Christians believe, right? We are our Christian, we pray to God, we say our Father out of heaven. It's not a secret. So we do not need to prove to you, Abdul, that the Father is our God. That's wonderful. As long as the Father is our God, then if Jesus said that I am and the Father is one, that means he is saying he is God. Let us read together. Actually, every chapter, we don't want to quote only a verse, but I advise you to read the whole chapter. We are just trying to save some time. All right? <clears throat> read carefully. All of this Jesus is claiming clearly that he is God. All of those verses, Jesus saying clearly, I am God. The Jews came around him, you know, come around about him and said to him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus said to them, I told you, and you believe not. The work that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness for me. So, what is the proof of who I am? My work. His amazing work. Amazing miracles. But you believe not. Because you are not my sheep. As I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. They follow me. You see, they follow me. You don't follow a prophet. You follow God. If somebody claimed to be a prophet, you don't follow him, you follow God. For the prophet will be asking you to follow God, not him. And I give into them eternal life. Who is the one who will give eternal life? I, I who? I am God. And they shall never perish. And the city, they say to you, where Jesus says I'm God? Well, who is the one who will give eternal life? Who is the one is it's in his hand? To make us live eternal life. If there is any man you know, Muslims, can give you eternal life. Do you remember any name? Have you met anyone? Did your prophet say, I give you eternal life? Or this is only what God do? Yet the fool, they say to you, where Jesus says, I am God. He's, he's saying that clearly. I give into them eternal life. He did not say, I will let somebody give it to you. And look, look, look with me. And then he says, which my father gave them me is a greater than all. And the Messiah, he is saying clearly that all the authority of the father was given to him. Actually, this is said clear in other verse in the Bible. All the authority that God, the father have, he gave it to his son of heaven and earth. And look what he said. 
I and the Father are one. And yet they say, where he said he is God. Can Muhammad say, I am and Allah is one? No. Do you have any prophet to claim that he and Allah is one? No. So why are you hypocrites saying where Jesus says, I am God? Do you see how easy to expose the lies? And now, let us make it clear that the Jews, they get it right. Did Jesus really claim to be God? Read carefully with me, guys. Then the Jews took up a stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good work I have showed you from my Father, for which those works you stone me. What I did? Why you stone me? Why you throw rocks at me? The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not. Which means they agree he have good work. But for blasphemy. Jesus just said, said a blasphemy. Did you see it? Muslim, do you see it? What is the blasphemy? And because that though being a man makes himself equal to God, make himself God. Do you see it? Do you see it? The Jews, they say to him, you make yourself God. Did Jesus say to them, I am not saying I'm God? No, read it. They continue saying, Jesus answered them. Is it written in the law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods into them, unto whom the word God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken, say ye of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, though bless me because I said, I am son of God. Why the Muslim don't say to us, where Jesus says, I am son of God? <laughs> what it much is going to make a difference between I am the son of God and God? It's the same. Do you see it? We will bring more, we bring more. But as long as we have a brother, son. Are you there, Sam? Is, is Sam is there? Is he still there or... He went, he left. We have tons of verses. We have tons of verses. I mean, my friend, you know, we have endless. You know, in, in John chapter 5, verse number 18, why the Jews, they chase him? Therefore, the Jews thought the more to kill him because not, he is not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So which means each time Jesus says, my father, he is saying he is equal to God, according to the Jews. Look like the Muslims, they knew the Torah more than the Jews. And the Muslims, they understand Judaism more than the Jews. The followers of the Arab man who clean his bum with three rocks, they can explain to us the Torah, but they cannot explain the Quran. Okay, so Sam, he's still there. No, 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 I will call you. I want to I wanna hear your... Uh, let me give you a call, Sam. Hold on. I like it to join us. <clears throat> yeah, we have tons more verses. I will let the brother Sam, he continue with you. You know, he will give you some extra. <laughs> Get ready for us. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, I will call you, uh, Sam. Get ready, please. <laughs> Get ready. Hello? I was saying, you don't need to call me, you're doing a great job. 
Oh, no, no, it's not about I need you or not, my friend. I, I, Sam, I, I love to have you with us. That's all, you know. <laughs> you know, we we are going to be blessed to have uh, you know, a, a great warrior. And uh, you would do actually better than, than me. First of all, you know, you, you, you have uh, way better skills to explain the Bible than me. And uh, for sure, your English is way better than mine. So, yeah, the Bible yeah. is a very deep topic. And sometimes English, if your English is not too much strong, you will be like, limited this is a very deep book you know it's not like the stupid quran about camel urine and garbage so go ahead uh, sam after you, you heard everything I, I said so what else you would like to share with us you did a phenomenal job everything you covered i mean it's wonderful glory to jesus christ and i always pray jesus christ our lord our god and savior blesses you your family preserves you and also me for his glory in jesus name now, I think you do, you may have customers, Siri. I see a guy named Salahuddin mm. Ayubi. Mm. Okay. You may have customers, see if he wants to debate you. Well, let's hear you first, and then we can see the customers. He well, can wait. Okay. Well, it, see, like I said, it was a phenomenal job. Only thing, only thing I like to do, and you do it better, because you know the Quran. Uh, to silence Muslims, <clears throat> the only thing I do is when I quote Jesus, I show how the Quran says the same thing about Allah, so they can't deny that Jesus is claiming to be God. For example, you went to John 5.18. <clears throat> in John 5.21, Jesus says, just as the Father <clears throat> raises the dead and gives them life, so too the Son gives life to whom He wills. So Jesus is the Son who gives life to whomever He wants. But then in 5.25, someone says, closer to the mic. I can't. I don't have a mic. It's a computer. <clears throat> don't worry. They hear you fine. Fine. 525, it's, uh, Jesus says, the hour is coming, and it is now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. And then in 2829, same chapter 5, just all chapter 5, what he just quoted, in 2829, says, the hour is coming, when all who are in their graves will hear his voice, the voice of the Son of God, and they will come out. So in this chapter, Jesus said, he the Son gives life, and that he the Son, at the last hour, the hour, he will raise the dead from their graves, from their graves, by the power of his voice. And then John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, CP, you are the master of the Quran. Can you uh, read for that? Uh, just wait, Sam. Somebody's saying that there is no sound. Guys, do you hear Do you hear the brother Sam or no? Yeah, everyone says, I think everyone says it. Do you, uh, hear, do you hear him? Do you hear brother Sam? Yes or no? Give me one, please. I don't know why they can't hear me. I, I think somebody's playing games, maybe. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. All right, I don't know before. Yeah, they on. hear you. They hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So everyone heard, right? John five twenty one, John five twenty five, John five twenty twenty nine and fourteen six, where Jesus says, "He the Son gives life to whom He wills." Jesus said, "The hour is coming. The hour is coming." where those who are in their graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and come out, and Jesus says, I am the truth. Now, CP, yes. you're the master of destroying Quran. Muhammad died because he knew you were coming, so he had a heart attack and he died. So can you read for them Surah Al, I believe it's Hajj, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. All right. Well, guys, watch this. CP is going to show you. And like I said, uh, you did a phenomenal job. Your presentation of the deity of Christ was phenomenal. And I'm not just saying it. That's why I said there's no need. I just want to listen. But thank you for having me. I, it's, a, it's an honor to it's serve with you. It's a pleasure, my friend. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, now in chapter 22, verse 6 to 7, does it say Allah, He is the truth, Al-Haq, yes. and He gives life to the dead? Yes. And does it not say that at the hour, Allah will raise them from their graves? Exactly. But wait, CP, that's what Jesus said. But here, you see, you remember, Sam, I made a video a long time ago. If exactly. you remember, it's the saying that Allah, he said he is the truth, but Jesus said first he is the truth. Yes. Allah is saying that he is the resurrector, but Jesus says I am the resurrection. If you remember that video, you know, this is yeah. many, many years ago. So here, yeah. what, what Sam is quoting for you is Allah trying to say that he is like Jesus. <laughs> this is the fake God. This is the fake Jesus. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. The percent. So for the Christians here, learn these arguments and go back and watch the videos. He did the videos on there. Like, is the Arabic word for resurrector al bayth Is it Ba'ith or so whatever? Al, How do you pronounce it? Al bayth Yeah, al bayth See, brother. Yeah. I speak Zakir Nayak Arabic. Chapter <laughs> <laughs> twenty-two. Anyway, uh. now that's one. You guys see it, right? You. There's no Muslim who can say what Jesus said in John five. 
that that's a creature who can speak like that. Nope. Jesus said, what brother you're saying? You know, Sam, when, when in chapter chapter 22, verse number 7, saying that the one who raised people from, resurrect people from a grave is God, is Allah. Yes. But isn't it the Quran, the same book, saying in chapter 3, verse number 49, that yep. Jesus says, I, I bring the dead. I quake the dead. Read it. This is yes, the Muslim it. translation, not mine. And I quicken the dead. And then at the end it says, by Allah leave. But this is a stupid you know, a statement here. Because by Allah leave or not, it says, I quicken the dead. He didn't say Allah quicken the dead. He said, I. Right? So 100%. the Quran is a stupid book made by a stupid author trying to copy from the Bible miracles Jesus did. And now he is saying a big fat mistake, exposing him, Muhammad, saying that uh, Jesus says, I quicken the dead. If if the one who quickened the dead is Allah, then Jesus should not say, I quicken the dead. Mm -hmm. 100%. You know? you know the Arabic better than anyone. He even says that I create from clay a bird and I breathe into it and it becomes a bird. Be it Allah, by Allah's leave. Well, like you said, doesn't matter. But for the people who don't know, the people don't know, that verb create is only used of Allah and Jesus. It's never used of anyone else. Only Allah and Jesus are said to create that Arabic verb, only used of them, and Jesus creates the same way Allah created Adam. It says Allah created Adam. In one place it says uh, clay, another place says mud, and breathe into Adam, and Adam came to life. Exactly what Jesus did. Create from clay a bird, breathe into it. Now, for the non-Muslims, so they understand the impact, for Jesus to breathe life means he possesses life. He's, he has the breath of life because when he breathes, people come to life. But that's something that's only true of God, and the Quran ascribes it to Jesus and only Jesus. So the two things that chapter 3, verse 49 says, chapter 3, verse 49, Jesus creates, breathes life, makes it alive, and raises the dead. Those two things are only said of God and Jesus, no one else. Now again, that's the Quran, but going back to the Bible, I want to, and you know these, you've, you have videos on these, I remember yeah. this, yeah. for the benefit. Another way you can show the Muslims that Jesus is claiming to be God, and CP mentioned it when he says, I am the light of the world. One of the names of Allah is An-Nur, the light, and in Surah 24, 35, chapter 24, verse 35 of the Quran, it says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And you ask a Muslim, According to Quran, can anyone claim to be the light of creation? They'll say, stuck for Allah, no way. But then why are you saying Jesus didn't claim to be God in John 8, 12, when he says, I am the light of the world, something that only God could say, and another title. I just want to give them another title. Yeah. In chapter 57, verse 3, Surah Al-Hadid. Come on, brother. The brother said, chapter 57, verse 3. There it says, Allah is the first and the last, right? The first and the last. In Revelation 1.17, Revelation 1.17, well, I'm not, I, was, I gave it away, but anyway, Revelation 1.17, John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He placed his right hand upon me and said, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. But then in verse 18, he says, I am the living one. I was dead, but behold, I live forevermore, and I hold the keys to death and Haiti. So Jesus said, I am the first and the last who died and lives forever. Quran says, Allah is the first and the last. And then you go to the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, by the way, Abdul Hajj, good to see you, brother. I've been missing you. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 44, verse 6, there God, Yahweh, God, the God, the true God of all, says, I am the first and the last. I am he. And that's in Isaiah 48, verse 12. So in Isaiah, the true God is the first and last. In the Quran, Muhammad stole the name of the true God, and he gave it to his false God and said, Allah is the first and last. But then Jesus in Revelation 1, 17, 18 says, I am the first and last who died and lives forever. Come on, Muslim, give it up. The Bible says, or <clears throat> quotes Jesus as saying he's God in the flesh. Now, I can stop there for a moment. Uh, Sam, Sam, as long as you mention I am he, but isn't it there is Jesus where he said, I am he too? Yeah, all throughout, the, here, I'll give you the, the one of the most powerful I am he statements. Yeah. And by the way, just for the people they know, because I write in English, and <clears throat> so they can benefit those who don't read Arabic. All this information we're talking about, I have written articles on the website I write for and blog. You'll find the articles there and on my YouTube channel, because I can only do English. 
I'm not good in Arabic. Now, CP is good in Arabic and in English, so he has an advantage over us. But now, let me just give them one. One, to connect the I am right. with the Old Testament. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. There it says, See now that I, even I, myself am he. If you read the translation in Greek, because the Hebrew is anihu, anihu. But in Greek, it's the same Greek words used in John. Ego I me. See now that I, even I, myself am he. I am he. Greek is ego I me. Same Greek words in John, because John wrote in Greek. But then notice what he says. <clears throat> he goes, I wound and I heal. I, I kill and I make alive, and there's none who can deliver out of my hands. I make, I kill, I make alive, I wound and I heal, and there's none who can deliver out of my hands. So now notice what the true God says. I am he, and Abdul Halaj, who reads the Hebrew, he, he's confirming, amen, good brother in the Lord. I am he, I kill and make alive, I wound and I heal, none can deliver out of my hands. Jesus comes and says, I am he, and I give them everlasting life, which you mentioned, and none can deliver out of my hands. John 10, 27 to 28. Jesus, you know the Old Testament. Yes, I do. You know, in the Old Testament, God says, I am he, and none can deliver out of God's hand, and he makes alive. Exactly. But you just said, you, a, a human being, flesh and blood human being standing in front of me, you said, you give everlasting life, and none can deliver out of your hand. Why are you speaking as if you're God? Well, the answer is obvious, right? Yeah. Well, but it doesn't matter really what we say. The Muslims, the, 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 the point today I'm trying to, to make that the Muslims, they refuse what is written there anyway. It doesn't matter if Jesus says, I am God or not. And they yeah. accept what Muhammad said. It doesn't matter what Muhammad said. If Muhammad, he put one verse in the Quran saying Jesus is God, they would say he's God. As simple as that. But Muhammad did not say that. As simple as that. This is the whole story. This is why you will not find a Muslim making fun of Jesus being born a virgin. Why? Because Muhammad, he made a verse saying, okay, Mary, she was virgin. So Muslim don't dare to question such a thing. But uh, Sam, I want to ask you here, sure. what is uh, significant about uh, Jesus uh, being born of a virgin? In Islam, there is no point. Yeah. See, the, the Quran has no answer because Muhammad is taking things that Christians believe, making part of the Quran, and not realizing this destroys him and shows he's a false prophet. And this is another typical Muslim argument that I want to respond on for the English-speaking Christians. They'll tell you, oh, come on, man, Adam born without mother and father. And by the way, recently, I actually had a Muslim named Abdullah Aman on my YouTube channel, and he's very close to giving his life to the Lord. So he brought this up. Come on, Jesus without mother, but Adam is greater without father and mother. So I asked him, I want this, I want the Christians to learn this, because CP already knows this, but for the Christians, so you can use it to see Muslims get saved. I said, okay, Adam's the first man, right? Yeah. Could he have a father or mother? No, because if he had father or mother, then he's not the first man. All right. Eve is the first woman, right? Yeah. Could she have a mother? No. Okay. So Adam had no parents because he's the first man. He can't have parents. Logically, it makes no sense. Then he wouldn't be the first man. So because he's the first man, God created him without parents. But when Jesus is born of Mary, why did he interrupt the normal process of human beings coming into the world through mother and father? But for Jesus, he interrupted that to make sure when Jesus came into the world without a father and a mother, if Jesus isn't truly the Son of God, and this was God's way of showing God's way of showing the world that this Jesus has no human father because I'm his father and he's truly my son. You see? Yeah. Well, and, I mean, and even that's what even the angel Gabriel or Jibril alayhi salam told Mary, right? When she told him in Luke 134, how can this be seeing I have known no man, I'm not unchaste, I'm a virgin. And then he answered, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the holy thing born will be called the Son of God. See, he's saying, God chose to <clears throat> cause you to conceive the physical body, human nature of Jesus, without sex, so that people will realize this is God's testimony. This one is truly my son, which is why no man can say he is his father. Right? Yeah. And, so uh, that's the answer, but wanna, the Quran doesn't give you the answer, does I want to add something to what you said, maybe you can add it in your article. In chapter 25, verse number 54, it says, What does that mean? That Allah, He made it from the water, 
a human, and he made it lineage by sexual marriage. So every human being, first the human being started from water, mud, dust, then that human being, after Adam, all of them, they established from marriage. Okay, but hold on, there's a mistake here. Isn't it Jesus is not from marriage? 100% so, not from marriage. So the Quran, and by the way, this is the same verse saying that you can have sexual uh, relationship with your daughter if she is a daughter from illegal marriage. If you go to the to interpretation for the verse, where it says, because the, the daughter is not a daughter from a legal marriage, so in Islam, she is not considered as a daughter, so it's lawful for the man to have sex with the daughter and the mother, which is showing the evil of the cult of Islam. But however, Christ. however, this verse confirm that every human being after Adam is establishment of relationship of marriage and lineage of marriage. So yeah. Jesus, who is not from a lineage of marriage, his lineage will go to who? Exactly, it has to go to God. That's it. Yeah, and in fact, I wanted to add to that to confirm it. Folks, and this, when I say to add to that, it's for the benefit of the people listening, not for CP. CP, I don't say it in front of him. He's our teacher. We learn from him. No, right, right, right. So, no, it's the truth. I mean, we give God glory for people like you that he raises because it shows God is almighty and he raises warriors. And you, and you're not doing it for fame, obviously. This is, you're doing it for the glory of Christ. But if the Lord doesn't come in our lifetime, when they're writing about the history of Christians who refuted Islam, your name will shine brightly by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. So that's just true. We give God glory for you. We don't give you glory. We give God glory for you. I mean, Amen? I mean to that. Okay. I just want, for their benefit, I want you to see, it's ironic in chapter 6, verse 101, 6, verse 101, Allah says, Wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth. How can he have a son seeing he has got no girlfriend? Consort. Okay. You know what's amazing, Christians? Those are, and you know this. If you've been following CP, you know, already know this. You know what's amazing? In, in chapter, I'm, I'm sorry, CP, I love Chapter 3, yeah. verse 47, and chapter 19, verse 20, Mary answers the same way. She says, how can I have a son seeing I have, you know, not touched any man? So she gives the same answer that Allah gives what does Allah say? It's easy for me. You don't need to have a man to have a son. No way. But easy for Mary is hard for Allah. See, Mary can have a son, no man. But Allah has to have a woman to have a son. So that means Mary is mightier than Allah. Exactly. And not only that, this is a proof that the God of Mary had nothing to do with the God of Muhammad. You know? Yeah. Because one of them, he can make Mary have son without having a, 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 a husband. And the other one saying clearly that even him cannot do it. Yeah. To himself, not, not to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now I, I tell the Muslim, okay, let's just apply your logic. If Allah can only have a son if he has a consort, then that means Mary, her son, Allah has to be the father without sex because I'm going to apply the logic. Okay, Allah, you can only have a son with a girlfriend. Then Mary can only have a son if someone is the father of her son. Since you're the one who caused her to get pregnant without sex, you are responsible for the birth of Jesus, so you are his father, whether you like it or not. Allahu Akbar! If, actually, if we ask Muslim, who is the father of Jesus, what the answer will be? Let us see. I will, I'm waiting. Okay, everybody have a father. Everybody have a father. There's no way. Anyone coming after Adam, you have a father. Okay, why Jesus? You don't have an, an, an answer for it. Who is the father of Jesus? If you say to me, he have no father, you are being silly, because this is a go against your God teaching. The Quran, as we just showed you, chapter 25, verse 54, says, Everybody have a father. And actually, Muhammad, he said, Call them by the names of their fathers. Which means you cannot call somebody, you can adopt a son and call him by the name of somebody else, right? But by yep. saying that, now, if I want to call Jesus, I, I have to call him, according to Islam, by the name of his father. Okay. I am the son of Adam. Adam is the first man. That's why we called son of Adam. Wonderful. We cannot say Adam the son of etc. because he's not born, as you explained. But Jesus, who is born, he's a son of who? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the Quranic logic you can escape it. And I want to add a few more points for their benefit. For their benefit, you can prove that Muhammad did what he accused Christians. If you read the Quran in chapter five, verse one sixteen, Muhammad said that supposedly on the day of judgment, Allah will ask Jesus, "Did you tell mankind to take you and your mother's two gods besides Allah?" Right, so notice the accusation. There are Christians supposed to believe Allah, Jesus, and Mary are three gods, which we don't believe, but I'm gonna show you now that Muhammad did that. 
if you, and CP mentioned it, in chapter 19, verse 19, you guys know this, chapter 19, verse 19, Jesus is said to be faultless, pure, perfect, sinless, pure, sinless, holy, no sin. But then if you go to chapter 3, verse 42, it says, the angels are saying to Mary, Allah has chosen thee and prefer, preferred thee, purified thee, purified thee, and preferred thee above all creatures, uh, of all women, I'm sorry, all women. So notice, Allah purified Mary and chose her above all women. If you read the commentators, they'll tell you that Allah purified Mary because Mary was conceived and she's, she was kept pure without sin. And you know the hadith, I think, see if you mentioned it, if not in this session and other sessions, where the hadith says that Satan touches every son or daughter of Adam when they're born except Mary and Jesus. Exactly. So Mary and Jesus, pure and sinless, Satan couldn't touch them. Mary and Jesus, pure and sinless, Satan could not touch them. And Allah made them pure from the time they're conceived until they were taken. Now, here's what's beautiful. If you go to chapter 16, verse 61 of the Quran, 16, verse 61, and chapter 35, verse 45 of the Quran, it says, if Allah were to punish mankind for their wrongdoing, if Allah were to call into account mankind for their wrongdoing, he would not leave a single creature on the earth. Notice what this means. If you are human, if you are a creature, then you can't help but to sin and do something wrong. That's why Allah would not leave any creature on the earth if he was to punish them for the wrongdoing. But hold on, Jesus and Mary are sinless. They never done anything wrong. They never made any mistake. So if these passages are true, then Jesus and Mary can't be creatures because if they're creatures, then they too would do wrong and Allah would punish them, but he shows them mercy. But the Quran says, no, Jesus never sinned and Mary was pure. So thank you, Mr. Muhammad, that you just turned Mary and Jesus as two gods alongside Allah. Allahu Akbar. Uh, very important point, and we can add to that, uh, Please. Sam. Add it, we, we can add many things, actually. But the, the important is, why... It is only Jesus have all those qualifications. Yeah. You see, Muhammad don't have them, and he is supposedly the most beloved prophet for Allah. Muhammad cannot resurrect people from death. Muhammad cannot make the blind see. Muhammad, and the funny, the Muslim, they say, I'm, I'm sure you saw many articles, they say in the time of Jesus, the Roman were very advanced in, uh, in, in medicine. <laughs> so Allah, he gave him a miracle of healing people. I mean, my friend, we are in the year 2020 and people dying because of Corona. What advance you are talking about? <laughs> what advance we are talking about? Advance why Jesus was giving the medicine? When Jesus, he saw the blind man, he said to him, you go and take this three times a day. <laughs> what does this have to do with medicine? I mean, this is the most stupid, funny, silly. They have a brain of a chicken when they try to refute us. Yep. Jesus did not give medicine, my friend, so we can say we can call him Dr. Jesus. He did not say, go and eat this three times a day and drink that three or five times a day. He said to the blind, see, and he saw. He said to the man who cannot walk, which one is easier to say? Your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk. And Sam, I want you to cover this one. Your sin is yeah. oh, thank forgiven. You. You mentioned that because uh, in Mark 2, and this is found in Mark chapter 2, you can read it, Matthew 9, it's also found in Luke 5. When they saw a par paralyzed man, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, what's beautiful, CP, and if you want to open up the Quran, it's uh, Surah al Imran, chapter 3, verse 135. The Jews respond, chapter 3, verse 135 of the Quran. The Jews respond the same way the Quran responds. It says, why does this man speak this way? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, if you go to chapter 3, verse 135 of the Quran, it says, who can forgive sins except Allah or God alone? It says the same thing. Chapter 3, verse 135, it says the same thing. So what did Jesus did not say? What he did not say? No, guys, let's talk for Allah, Rabbil Alameen. Let me take shahada. No, I'm not saying I forgive sins. I'm saying God said he's forgiven. No, that's not what he said. It says, why do such thoughts arise in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the to the paralytic, <clears throat> your sins are forgiven, or rise, pick up your mat, and walk, but so that you may know, that you may know the Son of Man has power to forgive sins on earth, the power, honor to forgive sins. I say to you, 
pick up your mat and walk. And immediately he got up and walked. So Jesus did a physical miracle to show he has the power to do what even the Quran says only God can do, forgive sins. And this is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. You read verses 1 to 12. But then a couple other things, not just forgive sins. He healed the man, his disease. He was paralyzed. He healed them physically. But then something else, a lot of people miss it. If you read Mark 2, it says they were thinking this in themselves. They didn't say it out loud. They were saying it in their heart. And Jesus says, why do such thoughts arise in your hearts? So Jesus knew what they were thinking in their hearts, not something they said for people to hear. So Jesus knows what they're thinking in their hearts. He forgives sins and heals diseases. Not only is this amazing in light of the Quran, it's amazing in light of the Old Testament. Because if you go to Psalm 103, guys, I'm giving you the reference. Psalm 103, verses 2 to 4. Psalm 103, verses 2 to 4, especially verses 2 to 3, it says, Bless Jehovah, bless the Lord, all my soul, right? <clears throat> oh, my soul, for all his benefits, who forgives you all your sins and heals all your diseases, and who redeems your life from the pit. Wait, why should I praise Jehovah? Why should I praise Yahweh? Why should I praise God and love him and praise him, worship him? Because he heals my diseases and he forgives my sins, everything Jesus did while he was on earth, and he still does in heaven. What else do you want? Old Testament shows that Jesus is claiming to be God and proving it by his miracles. The Quran is acknowledging that Jesus is saying things that only God can say, and he's proving it by miracles. So what else do you want, Muslims? Uh, this was the Gospel of Mark, not just the Gospel of John. Sam, what about in chapter 3, 49? It says the same, that Jesus, he can tell you what you store in your house, what you ate. Okay, if uh, 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 Sam, there is, there is 7 billion people in this earth. And now Jesus can tell every one of us what we are hiding in our houses. You tell yeah. me how that can happen. Of course, because he's God in the flesh. I mean, and another way to show that he knows everything and everyone. If you go to Revelation 2, 18, 23, uh, again, it, Jesus says the words of the Son of God. And when he punishes that false prophet is Jezebel. Guys, Revelation 2, 18 and 23. To show you, Jesus is claiming that he knows what everyone's doing. He sees everyone. And he's the one who's giving them life. In Revelation 2, 18 to 23, it says, These are the words of the Son of God. And then at the end, in verse 23, the Son of God says, When I do this to Jezebel, Jezebel's a false prophetess, then the churches will know, then the churches will know that I am he. I am he. There's the words I am again, uh, CP. I am he who searches the hearts and tests the minds to repay everyone according to what he's done. Now, CP, help me understand. Jesus says, I'm the one who knows all the hearts, and I will test all the minds, and I'm the one who's going to repay everyone for what you've done. That's God. Who can do that? Wow. Who can do that? Allah, He cannot do that. You know, when the Muslims uh, accuse Muhammad that he stole an underwear, <laughs> if you remember. And then, uh, and then supposedly Allah, He went to His office, and He sat down, and He decided to make it clear that Muhammad is not the one who stole the underwear. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Allah, he sent the verse saying, it's not for a prophet, and Yahul, it's not for a prophet to be a thief. Why Allah did not tell us, who is the thief then? Yes. You know, yes. the verse is so clear. People are accusing Muhammad that he stole. And then the easiest way, if you are God, and you are supposed to, you are the one who knows everything, who can see everything in the day of judgment, right? So yes. they, ask, they ask him, what kind of a prophet he do that? And they are asking, People, they are accusing him, and those are the Muslims. And the Muslim translation, by the way, saying it's not a, a prophet for a false, doesn't say that. It says, Yahul, which means he's not a thief. He is a thief, accused to be a thief. So if Allah is a God, as Muslim they claim, then he should make a verse that says, Muhammad is not a thief, and go to the house of this guy and get the panty from there. But because the verse, actually, this one confirmed that the real thief is Muhammad, because... He did not give us that real thief. So Muhammad, he fabricated this verse to cover his 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 uh, his, his madness of being a thief. He could not resist himself. And they accuse him. And just he said and made a verse. It's not for a prophet to be a thief. But why you don't say who is a thief? I yeah. mean, this is a very simple test for somebody claim that he is connected to God. Tell them, go to the house of this guy. Open the drawer. You will find the panty which you accuse me I took. They will go there, they will find it, it will be an amazing miracle. But making a verse saying, it's not Muhammad who take it, it's a clear proof 
that number one, if Muhammad is not the one really who stole it, Allah don't know. Number two, obviously Muhammad is the thief for real. And this is why Muhammad, he could not point his finger at anyone for he knew it is him who took it. Yeah. To add to your point, Sapi, uh, to show that Allah doesn't know everything, because Allah is simply Muhammad's, uh, it's Muhammad, but anyway, in 4827, I find this funny. In 48, chapter 48, verse 27, it's talking about Muhammad entering, the, the commentators say this, the verse, it's not that clear, that it says, you will enter into the sacred mosque, but then it says, inshallah, this yeah. is Allah speaking. Now, uh, Sapi, help me understand. Allah is telling Muhammad, you're going to enter this year, or you're going to enter yeah, this year. But then he says, inshallah, if Allah wills. So Allah doesn't know if it's his will that Muhammad's going to enter or not. So he has to say, if Allah wills. It's a, it's a disclaimer. <laughs> a disclaimer. Yeah. So if it doesn't happen, he will say, didn't I say to you, inshallah? Like, what's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> so, you, you? So Allah, who's supposedly all-knowing, says, you will enter this year if Allah wills. And people don't know why. They, that Muhammad had to say, inshallah, even though it's supposedly Allah speaking. Because in the commentaries, you can read Tafsir Ibn Kathir in English, and Sipi knows this. It says that Muhammad had told his followers, we are going to go to do Umrah. We're going to do lesser pilgrimage. So they all got ready. They all got their sacrificial animals, their families. But he was stopped at Hudaybiyah before he could reach. And the pagan said, you're not going to enter this year next year but you're going to have to sign this contract this agreement treaty and what was the treaty if any one of us leave to you muhammad you have to send them back but if any one of your people return to us we don't send them back so muhammad had to accept the conditions and you won't enter till next year he goes okay and then he wanted to write sign muhammad rasulullah he goes no by allah if we thought you were god's messenger we would believe you so they forced him to say muhammad ibn abdullah so then yeah, Umar yeah. got upset. Umar got upset. Say, hey, ya Rasul, didn't you say we were going to enter Mecca? He goes, yeah, but did I say this year? I didn't tell you this year. <laughs> so wait, Muhammad, you gathered all these people, all the sacrificial animals, and you made them journey to, to Mecca from Medina, and they didn't have buses at that time, so you have to walk. But it wasn't because you expected to, accept, uh, expected to enter that year. You just went there for the heck of it to write a treaty and come back. Yeah. Are you serious? Very, very clear, very clear that Muhammad is a false prophet. And this is what he practiced uh, uh, always. If you remember in chapter 8, verse number 65, 66, where he promised them that Allah said to him that 120 of you can fight 200. You remember? Yeah. And, and then they went to the war and they lost. And then they, when they came back, he want to cover his, 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 his disaster lie promise. So he said, now Allah lighten your task. And now Allah, he found out that you have a weakness. So uh, 100 of you can fight uh, uh, 200 of them. So from 1 to 10 to what? To 1 to 2. I mean, yeah. what kind of God he made a promise? That if one of you can fight, you see, if God make a promise that I will win against a billion, I will win. I mean, I have God in my side. That's it. I'm, uh, I'm winning. There's a, it's not my power anymore. So if Allah, he says to them, and this is Quran, chapter 8, verse number 65, 66, how fast does God, he change the numbers? Either you have to say he found himself wrong. This is too much exaggerating, stupid lie. And it doesn't make sense. And they are, it's not, it's not going to happen. And then he decided to uh, correct himself, making it more acceptable by saying one to two. And you know, the number here is the difference is a huge from one yeah. to ten to one to two and you will notice that the condition is the same like muslim cannot say oh in the first verse says uh, you have to be patient and it's it says the same be carefully oh prophet rose the believers to battle if there is 20 set state fast among you they will defeat the second verse is the same if there is a hundred steadfast so the condition is still the same it's not like uh if, if there is a, a, a 20 believers and there maybe there are not enough believers no it is the same condition steadfast that's all that's what i required so nothing changed and the steadfast is the same but the number changed so how god he said that uh, uh, uh sam did god he gave victory to israel before in the bible even though they are not qualified 
You can find it in the book of Judges where God reduced the soldiers to 300, Gideon, mm -hmm. uh, in order to show them that the, their victory is from God, not from them. He said, no, I want it to be reduced so that when you defeat this larger army of 10,000, you won't take credit for it. You know, I did it because it's a human impossible. Such a small number can defeat such a large host unless God is there. But again, remember, in Islam, you have Allah, who is actually the alter ego of Muhammad, right? But yeah, yeah so but isn't it but, Muhammad? He said that the angel Jibril is fighting with him. Oh yeah. Okay, in so fact, so who care about the twenty and ten and fifty and sixty? Who care about these numbers? If you have an angel with six hundred wings, and he alone can cover the horizon. This yeah. angel, he can if he if you if we he move his wings, he can make the biggest hurricane in the world. He can make and, the whole army fly. <laughs> and CP, it says in chapter eight, verse twelve, it says that he commanded the angels to strike them at their fingertips and their necks. Right. Chapter eight, the same surah you're reading. Right, right. It's not even directed to the Muslims. It's saying, "You angels, you're with them. You strike their necks and their fingertips." And yet, still, with the angels doing that, still. They did not make it. I wasn't still, you know, strong enough to help the Muslims. Yeah. Oh, but see, let me add one more point to this because you're All reading right. chapter 8. That was chapter 8, verse 12, guys. Yeah. But it gets even worse. In chapter 8, verse 43, 44, guys, you got to listen to because it's the same chapter. All of this was chapter 8. Chapter 8, 12, it says the angels were there and he says to the angels, I am with you. I command you strike their fingertips, their necks. That still wasn't good enough. But in chapter 8, verses 43, 44, it says that Allah showed to Muhammad exactly. in a dream the number of the pagans being very few and small in number. Because Allah said, if I had shown you their number, then there would have been fighting among you. You would have been afraid. So I deceived you into making it seem they were fewer. Because if I showed you as many, you'd be too scared. So I helped you. <laughs> I lied to you. What a joke. <laughs> yeah, he told them that he saw a dream, and then uh, the dream is telling them that they are few in number. And then when he went, and they came back to him and says, "But you told us they are only few. What? They are not a few." <laughs> so no, but the, 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 an, the answer of Fifi and Mimi is ready, uh, brother. If I tell you there are many, you will not go anyway. So he's even lying to the Muslims. This is yeah. God Himself, Aka Muhammad, lying to the Muslim, and they excuse. Uh, you know, if I didn't, if I tell you the truth, he will not do it. See, who wow. was the who was the father of all lies, Sam? Of Satan, and he's the father of Muhammad. Muhammad is his son. Exactly. Muhammad is his son because because God, God, he cannot be the creator of lies. You know, he don't lie. He don't fabricate. He don't he don't do this. God, he say even Jesus, he forbid us from taking oath. Either you say yeah, yeah, or nay, nay. Why? No. Because a person who is decent. Why he might take oath? You know? 100%. Because, you know, uh, oath usually is somebody, he lie all the time, and now he want to prove that he is decent now. So he what he do? He use the name of God. Right? So, yeah. But if you are a liar all the time, I mean, using the name of God, obviously you don't care for God anyway, because you are a liar. If you care for God, you will not lie before. Hmm. 100%. See, if you have a customer who calls him some homeless shamoon, like he's going to make me cry, I'm going to go say, Aah. anyway. He's saying, what do you think of CPIG just revised John 8, 12 by introducing the word God in it? I don't know if this, uh, this stone smoocher who licks the black stone like his prophet did is going to answer me because I don't think he's going to call you. He's too afraid to call you, but I hope he calls you. But if he's honest enough and he's not ashamed of his prophet, even though I'm ashamed of his prophet for him, I want him to tell everyone in the room, is Anur one of the names of his God? Maybe he'll answer in the text because he's very tough on the text. But I'm sure he's not yeah, going to call. But, but what he what he what he mean by saying? I don't understand. Like he's saying, look, he's saying, uh, uh, CP. Uh, uh, he called me pig. Uh, he yeah. reversed John eight twelve by introducing the word God in in in, in it. Yes. He said yes. it says, "I am God, the light of the world." Yes. Well, this is the Aramaic, and well, I, actually, each time Jesus says, "I am," he is saying, "I am the God of the world." No, and I'm, he's going to prove it. That's why I want him to answer. He's going to prove the translation is right. But I don't think he's going to answer. He's a waste of time. Because once he answers, folks, let me show you why the Aramaic, in plain English, is capturing the words of Jesus. Let me explain it for you, the benefit of the English speakers. And remember, uh, some he speak Aramaic, for those who do not know. Yeah, I want to explain, just so they can understand, why is it bringing out the words as, I am God, the light of the world? 
It's not because they're adding to Jesus' words or twisting it, because as CP mentioned, the words I am are one of the names of God. And secondly, no one can say I am the light of the world unless you're God. So the Aramaic translation English is capturing the meaning of Jesus' words perfectly. That's why I want to ask him, can you tell us in the text, but he's not going to do it. I know I'm wasting my time, but still, I want him to prove that this translation is valid. I want him to say, An-Nur, the light, is not one of the names of Allah. It's a name you can give to others, because then he's going to commit shirk. And I want him to say that a creature can say, I am the light of the world, when his Quran in chapter 24, verse 35 says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. So for you Christians... This translation of the Aramaic and English is capturing the meaning of Jesus' words. Don't let them deceive you, because only God and God alone can say that he is the light of the world and the source of all light. And CP explained it already, what he means by light. It's not done about sunlight. It means giving you understanding to find your way and to find the truth, illumination. Only God can be the source of that light, and only God can say, I'm the light of creation, I know some Muslims will probably say, if they're smart Muslims, oh, but Jesus said the disciples are the light of the world in Matthew 5.14. Yes and no. The disciples reflect the light of Jesus in them. By what? You know, by, by, because they are, they are preaching his word. This is exactly Thank why, you. you know, that's it. He is the source because Jesus is in them and it's his light shining through them. So they are like the moon reflecting the light of the sun. Jesus is the source, because in John 1, 9, it says it. The true light, Jesus Christ, that illuminates all men, was coming into the world. And he even says, whoever believes in me shall have the light of life in him. So this stone smoocher, if he's not ashamed of Allah and his messenger, tell us, no, you can call a creature the light, and you can call a creature the light of creation, and you can say a creature is the source of light. You know you're a liar, and you won't say it, so the Aramaic Bible perfectly captures the words of Jesus. And not only that, I have a challenge for those Muhammadan. If somebody in the Middle East right now said, I am the light of the world, what the accusation would be against him? Thank you. He is claiming to be God. <laughs> and and CP, and, and in fact, you can him. inform me, I remember reading, and it's one of my articles, around 800s, 9th century, yeah. there was this Sufi Muslim named Al-Halaj, right? Al-Halaj? Al-Halaj, yeah, okay. When he said Anul Haq, and what did they do to him? They kill him. Why? He just said, I'm the truth. Uh, CP, what's wrong with you? You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the second, the second you say something, any, any sentence of Jesus said is qualify for death for any Muslim. If he said it, he is the light. He is the resurrection. He is the truth. Those are the names of Allah, al help. And he is the alpha. He is the uh, omega. Uh, I am, I, I am the way. I am, I am the water. I'm the life. I am the life. I mean, who is the life? I am the I am the life. And yet they say to you what he said. Who is the life, Muslims? Can Thank Muhammad you. say? Can Muhammad say the one who saw me? He saw God. <laughs> no, the one who saw him, they saw Shaitan. They saw Satan. And I, some people don't know what we're referring to, guys. There was a Muslim Sufi who believed that God could fill you so much that you could be lost. And so he said, I am the truth. And the Muslims killed him for saying that. Why did they kill him? Because they know I am the truth. That's something only God can say. So when he said it, they took it as if he's claiming to be God. But then when you show Jesus saying, I am the truth. No, he's a prophet. It's stuck for Allah, Rabbil Alameen, alayhi salam. Any, any, any of those claims Jesus he said and the Jews they said clearly he's making himself equal to God I mean they, they did not even if in the front of Jesus they said that they did not say it in his back they said to him he said to them why you are stoning me what 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 the bad I did you, you, you know I did only good work they said that we are not stoning you for the good you did but you for a claiming to be God 100%. Another thing I want to add to show that Jesus claimed to be God, a, ask a Muslim, when you do dua, when you pray, can you pray to anyone besides Allah? They'll say, no, only Allah. Oh, John 14, 13 and 14. John 14, 13 and 14. Jesus says, you may ask anything in my name, and I will do it so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. You may ask me in my name, and I will do it. John 14, 13 and 14. Jesus says, make dua to me. Invoke me in my name, 
When you invoke me, I from heaven will answer you. I from heaven will answer your prayers and I will do the miracles through you when you ask me in my name when I'm in heaven. So Jesus is saying, make dua to me. Ask any Muslim dua. Do you do it to God or to a creature? They'll say God. So if Jesus is a Muslim, why is Jesus saying when I go to the Father? You can ask me in my name and I will do it because for him to answer prayer, he must hear all prayers, which means he's all knowing, and he must have the power to answer all prayers. So Jesus is saying, I am God's son who is equal to the father who can do what only God does, answer prayer. That's John 14, 13 to 14. And yet the Quran in chapter 40, verse 60, chapter 40, verse 60, the Quran says, call upon your Lord and whoever refuses to do so, worships his Lord, he is arrogant, right? So there you go. What more do you want? Jesus is claiming the things that only God can do. And homeless Shimon, all he can do is call you a pig and call me homeless. See, CP, and I'm not going to sleep at night because he called me homeless. <laughs> uh, you see, this is what the Muslims, they do. They try to put you down. Actually, if you are really a poor person, the Lord, he says, bless those who they are the poor. And, the, and the, Sam the poor, that is additional proof, that Sam is a warrior and he is a good man. Thank for you. there's many people, they do many things for the sake of money, like your prophet. So Sam, the homeless, being a homeless, as you claim, is witnessing that Sam is a good man. And actually, as long as the Muslims are making fun of my, of my brother Sam, and I don't know about homeless thing, I don't know if you're like in your home or somewhere, but yeah. I encourage all the Christians to support our brother Sam. As you see, the Muslims are making fun of our brother to be homeless. My house is your house, my friend uh, Sam, anytime, anytime you. you want. So yes. all our houses is open for Sam and he is not homeless. And the first ho house is open for him is the house of the Lord. People who for the Lord, they don't need houses for God, he provide them, my friend. I never worry about me being provided my bread tomorrow. Amen. Amen. This, is what, this, is, what, this is what believer have. And you making fun of somebody that's a clear, clear evidence that you have nothing to say, except you are being just a kid like your prophet. Hallelujah. And CP, let's compare it to what Jesus said in Matthew 8, 19 to 20. Someone says, I want to follow you. He goes, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but I, the son of man, have nowhere to lay my head. Yeah. And compare that to Muhammad. Muhammad who was so rich that he had at least 11 homes because for each one of his wives, he had to have a home for them. Guys, how many of you have one home, let alone 11? And yet Muhammad had 11 for each one of his no, wives. No, brother, he was getting Obamacare and welfare. <laughs> <laughs> so glory to God, it's an honor if I am homeless, but thank Jesus he provides for my daily bread for me and my children. So, but if I was, what greater honor than to be like my Lord Jesus, who when he was on earth, he didn't even own a home, but he allowed people to invite him in and feed him because he was teaching us by example, you follow me, you don't make money off of the gospel. The gospel is not for you to get rich and live in a mansion. The gospel is to get people spiritually rich and saved because you have a home with me in glory that no one will take away. Amen. So glory to Jesus, it's an honor for me to be like my Lord. I'm not worthy to kiss his sandals. Praise my Lord Jesus. Well, thank you, Sam, for uh, for being with us today. And I appreciate you always. Anytime, feel free to say you would like to be with us, and I will be happy to have you. Yes. Just let them, see, let them know they can find these articles on my blog, yeah. answeringislam.net, and yeah. answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, and they can check me out on YouTube. And CP, I just want to say, we love you. I thank God that I live at a time where I have you doing what you do. May he give you many years until Jesus comes to wreck Islam and get Muslims saved. We need more brothers like you. Thank you. Thank you. God the best, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Never expect a Muslim to be a person who speak in maturity. People who follow a person like Muhammad, they cannot be mature. This is why their answer, their accusation is immature. And because of that, actually, they are helping us more to leave Islam. As an example, today, one of the Muslims, he made a video. Uh, Brothers and sisters, I advise you to avoid watching Christian Prince videos. I mean, live stream. I mean, how stupid you are. You just ask, you, are, you, you just made them come to my live stream.
they are immature because any Muslim who never heard of me now he will wonder okay who is this guy Christian Prince and why I should not watch his stream they come to my stream they leave Islam as simple as that they are immature insecure this is why they get offended for saying the truth when you are insecure anything is offending you for you have a lack of security right <clears throat> but the Lord always he sent the truth to you you try to run away from it is going to come even your Quran your funny Quran says uh, they try to to uh, to cover or stop the light of Allah by their mouth and I find this verse is very funny because Muhammad he just admitted that they are just trying to cover the light of Allah by their mouth not by their hand so why you want to kill them the only way to stop them from covering the light of Allah as you claim is killing them right very stupid religion so clearly for us Jesus said that he is God and we are not explaining this to the Muslims by the way because most of Muslims it doesn't matter if it says there clearly or doesn't say uh, at the end of the day they say we don't believe in this book anyway however the Quran itself is a proof that Jesus is God because Allah himself he could not present himself to you Muslims without Jesus he have to use the name of Jesus and he have to use the names of the prophets of Jesus the existence of the same Allah is dependent on the existence of the true God the Messiah Satan he cannot he cannot be exist if God did not create an angel and that angel he failed to be Satan and that is Allah in order for him to deceive he have to use the good names in order to put poison in the food of somebody you have to put to get food you don't put poison in a dish and say hey eat poison you have to bring to the people something delicious something they like something good and that is the name of Christ so Muhammad he did not use the name of Jesus because he liked to use it but because he have to Satan have no authority so he used the good names to deceive the foolish ones claiming that he is coming from God and Jesus he warned us about that so they have no excuse he said it clearly be aware of false teachers false prophet they come to you in a clothes of a sheep but they are wolves Muhammad in the beginning he come in the clothes of a sheep he was peaceful Christian will go to heaven Jews will go to heaven Sabi I will go to heaven when he got his weapon ready sharp he killed all the sheep who oppose him all the sheep whoever don't believe in him he ate him alive And this is why Muslims are terrified that Islam will collapse if the Bible enter their countries. This is why it's a high crime. Look as if you are doing a treason if you smuggle Bibles in Saudi Arabia, if you preach the gospel in any Islamic country, if you refute and answer a Muslim in Islamic countries. This is the only way to stop people from leaving Islam they are scared to death if Islam is a truth 
and Islam will prevail anyway. Why you need to kill people if they been uh, listen to the Bible? I mean, you are sure that Islam is the truth. So what's the problem? The problem is that Islam is insecure cult. And the only one, the only way to keep it alive is the sword. Actually, the head of the Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaradawi, and he is the head of the ulama al muslimin in the world for more than 20 years, Al-Qaradawi. He said, if not the sword, Islam will be demolished long time ago. And his video is in memory TV, you can watch it. If not the sword, there is no Islam today. All right. Do you confirm that the word God is being in John 8 to 12? What is the word God in Aramaic? A homeless, uh, uh, the, this is, you are the shoe of someone. Yeah, I, con I confirm. Yes, I confirm. You are a certified donkey. I mean, what's wrong? <laughs> Do you confirm? Yeah, I confirm. <laughs> because you idiot. Here we go. It's in the front of you, you donkey, certified donkey, son of Muta. When Moses, he said to God, okay, what's your name? He said, I am who I am. And then he said to him, okay, I'm going to go to my people now. And what I will say to them, he said, say to them, I am sent me. So who is I am? This is the name of God, your donkey. It's in the front of you. Do you confirm that the word there is God? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the front of you what I will say to my people say I am what is I am this is the Hebrew word I am so the word I am became the name of God you are a certified donkey like you're a prophet I mean you follow a prophet who do not know how to write how to read according to you and then you are coming to us to teach us how to write how to read Uh, do you confirm that uh, the heaven have 100 floor? Where do you learn that the heaven have 100 floor? It's not from the Hadith CP. Okay, where do you get this from? You're fabricating your own religion? Man, filthy, filthy savage, you know, savage. I wonder what kind of society you live in. Savage. You don't speak with respect. You call people all kind of stupid names. And you are savage to the point you call yourself by our names. I mean, you don't have dignity. Imagine I go and call myself uh, uh, Fifi, I, because by calling yourself Sam Shamoon, Sam Shamoon is riding you right now. <laughs> so yes, we confirm that the word God there is exist, for this is the name of God. Who sent you? What I will say to them? He said to them, send, tell them, I am who sent me. So when Jesus says, I am, he is saying, I am the one who sent Moses. I am the living God who sent Abraham. I am the living God who sent the disciples. I am he. And how many times Jesus says, I am he? Endless. I am he. Actually, even when the soldiers, they came to Jesus to, to, to arrest him, you know, uh, Jesus said, they said, uh, who is, uh, 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 who is, who of you is the Messiah, Jesus, the Nazareth? Jesus said, I am he. And as soon he said, I am he, the backward and fell into the ground. Imagine they are coming to arrest him. What does I am he mean? He who? In John chapter 13, verse number 19, Jesus again, he says, I am he. Who is he? Christianity is not the same as a silly Islam who have uh, no explanation, no answer. It's just a quotation of a rabbi music, which doesn't even make sense in any rabbi music. This is a book of God. It 
in John 8 24 let me go there and I will use the translation this I do suddenly they like this translation King James <laughs> <coughs> and I say therefore unto you that you shall die in your sin for you believe that I am that I am he you shall die in your sin any Muslim he is a he's a certified scholar can explain to us the verse <laughs> as long as do you uh, do you acknowledge that the word I am he there? <laughs> they cannot explain to us a single verse in their book, and suddenly they became scholars in our book. And remember, when you want to debate somebody about his faith, you are debating about his faith, you idiot, not yours. So when you debate me, you debate me about how we understand and how believe we believe in our book. When we say to this guy from Nigeria, the savage man. Al Bukhari says so. I said, I don't agree with Bukhari. Okay, a tafsir says, say, who said I don't care for tafsir? Okay. Uh, it says, Ashabu uh, uh, Jannah, how many Jannah you have? He says, 100. But this is from, tafsir, from, from, the, from the hadith. He don't believe in hadith when he want. Even he refused all the translation we provide. Oh, this is the wrong translation. So he do that not only for our book. He do that even to his books in order to go in denial. He create his own religion. And this always what the Muslims do. The second you put him in the corner, he change his skin. He say, I don't believe in this. I don't agree with that. But it's not up to you. Even when he's a prophet, explain a verse. Even he's a prophet, when he explained, he said, I don't believe in this. Just to in order to escape the humiliation of following a false prophet. But how we can debate a person who make his own religion? There's no need. He have his own fiction, understanding for the Quran. We don't. We Christians agree upon it. All the interpretation you see for that verse saying that Jesus saying he's God. All of them. You will not find one single interpretation it doesn't say that there is Jesus says I am the living God and you notice that this guy is like a bug you know like like a fly and get away she come back <laughs> And he think, and by the way, he think like he is bothering us. For me, it's it's fun. Sometimes we are bored. We need somebody to laugh at to at, and uh, uh, we cannot laugh at someone he is believing in the true God. But we can laugh at the fool who he think he is smart because he is the one laughing at himself. For me, I cannot laugh at a believer in the true God. I will laugh at him. Why? But somebody believe in camel urine. Somebody believe that the the the, the 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 sperm became a congealed blood. I laugh at him. What I can say? What I can do? I mean, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? And just to show you the stupidity, when Jesus says, "How many human can claim to be the light of the world?" Nobody. How many human they can claim to be the way? Nobody. Salvation, nobody. Resurrection, nobody. The truth, nobody. All those are attribute of God according to Islam and yet those cowards they say to you where Jesus says I am God and where Jesus says I am the living God so what he is the dead God like your God I breathe this is in the Quran chapter 3 verse number 49 I breathe in the clay who is breathing Jesus if you remember yesterday we make a video called Allah he breathed, but nobody answered me about how Allah he breathed. Any Muslim knew how Allah he breathed? How he breathed?
In a second, you will see how much they are in this ability. Simple question. How Allah he breathed? They don't know. Breathe what? They don't know. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? Any Muslim have a comment? Well, any question to Islam is difficult. It doesn't matter how 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 simple it is. When you say to a Muslim, okay, Allah, he did not create the Quran, so the Quran is coming from where? Very mad, the very mad religion. Because now we have Allah isn't created and the Quran is created. So we have to divine. Anything is not created, it's divine, as simple as that. Anything is not created, it's eternal. If the Quran, if the word of Allah not created, it is eternal, it's divine. So now we have Allah is not the one who created the Quran. Okay. And Allah is not created. So now we have to not create it. How we can solve this problem? Don't you must then believe in the oneness of Allah? Now we have two intentity. Intentity. T -t 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 -t. <laughs> we have two divine. And the word of Allah, remember, suppose it's holy, and Allah is holy, so now we have two holy. Is the word of Allah, and Allah is one, they say no. So how you believe in the oneness of Allah, yet Allah and his word is not one, and the word of Allah not created? And how it is the word of Allah, if it's not created by Allah? How you say it's the word of Allah? Just to show you how stupid this cult. Because if I am not the one who created this thing, this thing does not belong to me. So if the Quran is not the word of Allah, obviously the Quran is not from the book of Allah, not from the mouth of Allah, not Allah. It's coming from somewhere else. And when you say it's not created, you are saying to me that the Quran by itself is God. He do not need Allah to exist. Do do the Quran need Allah to exist, Muslims? Any Muslim? Do the Quran need Allah to exist? Do you remember today the callers? Difficult question. I have no answer for that. Each time we get a Muslim calling us, he have no answer. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim in the bushes? And the funny, by the way, if you show the Muslims any translation in the for the Quran, and they don't like it, they say, "I don't like this translation. Show me a different translation." So for us, even when we quote for them the Bible, do you have to show them a translation they like, or show me that translation? Because His Majesty don't agree with this translation. Take care of yourself from Corona. My friend, Corona, what Corona? We will die. I mean, who cares? I, honestly, I don't care. I die today, I die tomorrow. Why people, they are so much attached to this life? I don't care. I die this today, I got to tomorrow. You will die only once. Those who they are afraid from death, death will follow them. The more scared you are, the more is going to come to you. Don't live in the phobia and don't be terrified. 
This is my advice to all the people. The moment right now you are alive and you are healthy, enjoy it. Because tomorrow you don't know. So if you die, so what? And what you will lose, seriously. I mean, why people, they are so much attached to this stupid life. Well, what you will lose? You will not watch YouTube? What we are attached to? There is nothing. And God is my witness. Actually, I pray to the Lord to take me when I am healthy faster than when I am sick. I don't want to go and when I am sick. I want to go I'm healthy. It's better. Die happy. However, if the Lord will take me when I'm sick, it's okay. Let your will be done. No. Never fear. If you are a believer, you should not fear those those issues. Uh, for for us, you know, death is just a start of a new journey. It's not the end. And if you are ready, you are ready. If you are not, then you should fear. For me, I don't really have fear. Actually, it might be uh, maybe silly to say, uh, because some people will say, well, why do you want to say that? Or oh, I pray to the Lord not to make me live long, because this is the earth of suffering. This is a prayer from my heart to the Lord. I do my best, and I will do my best until I am alive. But I'm not really attached to this earth, and I pray for him not to make me live for long. I don't want to live for long. What for? If it's about my mission, I made tens of thousands of videos. I made books. Well, what I can do more? So I don't really, you know, I'm not... Uh, and I, I pray in front of you. I pray to the Lord right now as we speak, that not to make me live long. Because the longer you live, you live in this earth, the longer you suffer. And I don't know why people they are so much attached to suffering. What do you see around you? Look at that. Look, the, the, the whole world is corrupt. Corruption, lies, scam, killing, violence. Uh, uh, I mean, you can't even. There's nothing good around you. What, what do you see around you? People are busy watching soccer. Those people in Italy, why Italy they are suffering? Because they are mad about watching football. Crazy people. They are busy from God. They are, their God now is a football. They go to the stadium and there's hundreds of people, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people gathering to get Corona. Good for you. Have fun. And now they are paying the price. For they are busy from God because God became like justice and it's a name, you know, we don't care for him, we don't follow him. Right? This corona actually, even though it is killing people, but it's a good way to remind people about who they are. Human being is very, very greedy, very disgusting. They think he's God. Look at those Muslims, how they are making fun of Jesus every day. Insulting God. Okay, just wait. Just wait. When, when Corona come, the Muslims, they claim that Corona is the army of Allah to punish China. And now Corona is eating Turkey, eating Iran. And by the way, uh, Muslim countries have the lowest numbers of Corona. But do you know why? Because they are liars. In Iran, people dying in the street, left and right. And they are saying only until now we have 3,000 people die. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what Satan he do. Satan he direct the war. He's a war director. So when Corona appear, he said to them, "Tell the Christians, tell the Jews, tell the Hindus, tell that this is the punishment for a China." And then we find out that from even in China, a lot of Muslims die. 
And then Corona now is coming to Egypt and Emirat. Even the Kaaba is empty. Even now they they wanna they, they are thinking about the, to to cancel the Hajj for this year because of Corona. And now Turkey is collapsing. Death is raise is rising. Numbers are false. Tourism, there is no tourist in Turkey no more. Turkey is, is gone. You know, see, if this corona stay for the coming 10 months, Turkey is not exist no more as a government. This Turkey will divide will be divided because civil war will start. People have no food, no, no money. This country live only from tourism. There's nothing. They have no oil, they have nothing. Look at what happened in Saudi Arabia. They are desperate to sell oil, nobody buying. Corona is destroying Saudi Arabia. And those countries, they have nothing. So the one have tourism, have no business. And the one have oil, nobody buying. Right? Bill Gates called recovered heroes. I mean, this is funny propaganda. I mean, what hero about it? Hero. I don't know. Human being is very silly, my friend. And Bill Gates, you know, even people, they call, they quote Bill Gates as Bill Gates is God. Bill Gates, he said. The guy, he made a software. Actually, even, even the software, which is window, is not his. That's it. Bill Gates, he said. Yeah. Prophet Bill Gates. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you remember before Corona, even we're changing the topic. Before Corona, what 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 the media is busy about? They are busy. They want to make a bathroom uh, for a male. They can go with the female. <laughs> a prince, what his name? The guy who ma who married this uh, crazy uh, 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 woman, uh, Megan, whatever his her, her name, prince. He decided to give up his title. The whole media is talking about. I mean, who, what, what we would do, what we have to do with those princes and princes. You poor people, what you have to do with them? Why you are even wasting your time? You know, human being, he like fiction. He like princes, prince. Oh, she did marry him. She's going to divorce him. Soon you will see them getting divorced. Don't you know that those people are people of fornication? They have no marriage. What marriage? They fornicate. The, even their marriage is a fornication. They marry this year, next year they are divorced, they, they have a new husband, then the year after a new husband, the year after a new husband, and, and people are busy. The prince, the Trump, he says, we will not protect them. I mean, why I need to know even who, why they, why need to protect them? I, uh, are they higher than us? We will not allow you to protect them from our pocket. This is our tax. But when you watch TV before Corona, there is nothing in TV except an actor. He was accused that he touched the nipple of his co-worker. If, 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 if. Another news. A director, he said that he never look at women when they are doing their act. If, 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 if. I mean, the women, they are going naked in the front of you and you don't look? Oh, the guy was wearing sunglasses. I mean, the news is hilarious. And then Corona came. And suddenly, human being became a potato. Suddenly, human being. You open TV, CNN, Corona. You open Fox News, Corona. You go to the White House, Corona. CBC, Corona. Go, Corona, Corona, go, 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 Corona, go, 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 Corona. I went to Walmart. A woman, she saw me 20 meters away. She fell down in the ground because she, is, she have a phobia of Corona because I get close to her. But I am far away still. Honestly, she fell down on the ground. She cannot walk no more. She hit the shelf and everything fell down. I said, don't worry, I'm not sick and I'm, I'm far away from you. She did not look at me and she said, it's okay, it's okay. She didn't dare to look at me because she will get corona. <laughs> but he, this is how you see human being is. 
from a person so proud about technology yesterday, so proud about science yesterday, the, the atheists, they, 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 they slaughter the world saying, God does not exist. There's a big bang. Big bang take you, my friend. Big bang in your head. Little tiny corona made you look, look like a chicken. Uh, Muhammad Asif, I, I don't watch his video, my friend, but I heard that he said, don't watch my videos. So why you are here, you donkey? If Fifi, he said to you, don't watch a Christian prince life, and you are coming here, obviously Fifi is donkey like you, and he made you come here. <laughs> why I want to watch his videos? <laughs> you talk about me, I don't talk about you. If I talk about you, I talk to talk about Islam, not about you. None of you is important for me. My shoe is better value than you and your Fifi. Who speak like a, you know, <coughs> and, and, and the funny one, he blink with his eye. I mean, even prostitute don't do that. Anyway, so this Corona, this Corona is a great example how a human being, he changed his attitude immediately between the time of relaxation to the time of fear. Fear what make a human being change. Relaxation and wealth, a human being is filthy, greedy. He don't respect anything. He's God. He think he's powerful. He's above everything. Corona came, everybody doing pee pee in his band. Corona, Corona, you know. Let the world remember that you cannot live without the grace of God. If little Corona did this, and Corona, by the way, this virus is not really that much dangerous compared what 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 can happen for real. This Corona is way weak. For what is coming. I'm not prophesying, I'm not a prophet, but I say to you, just wait. There's Corona, and there's the grandfather of Corona, and there's the grandson of Corona. Now, the grandson of Corona is going to make them do pee pee for, for maybe 10, 10 years. Because this Corona is, is changing. You see, if you go right now, you'll find that there's many Corona. Which one? They don't know which one. It's not one corona. There's many corona. They call it like uh, uh, 19, but the fact there's many corona. This is why each one of them have different symptoms. The symptom is not the same. Why? Because they are not the same. No, no, corona is not scary compared to what is going to come because this one, it takes many days before you die if you are going to die. And your immune system still can refuse it and reject it and fight it. But there's more coming viruses where people will die instantly, which means maybe in a few hours. And look, a little tiny virus make New York ghost town. Go, this this uh, this city who they keep saying denying God, they keep and, and they are they, they vote for abortion, they vote for everything against God. Everything against God, they vote for it. And actually, it's amazingly that you will find that uh, uh, certain areas in the USA is infected in a huge number. Islamic countries are collapsing. Iran, there is no place even for dead people. But if you learn, if you if you hear the news. Uh, of Muslim countries about Corona, they say to you, you see, in Muslim country, when they say there's one person die, it means the news they say, uh, 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 in, uh, in like uh, uh, Saudi TV. Uh, today, there is an accident in Los Angeles Highway, and more than 20 cars, they hit each other, and there was no injury. Okay, that's in the news. But in the same day, there was a trip for children from school, from the same city where this TV station broadcasting. More than 50 child get killed. It's not in the news. 
they said nothing. An accident of cars hitting each other, nobody killed, nobody injured. In LA, it's in their TV. But the accident which killed 50 child in their, in their, in their, in their country, nobody hear about it. Why? Because Islamic countries, they try always to present positive image. There's no freedom of, uh, of news. There's no, you can say whatever you want. You can, you can be executed just for saying the news. So in their TV, they say things, okay. Did you remember Ahmed Najah? They asked him how you treat the gays in Iran. He said, we don't have gay in Iran. <laughs> we don't have gay in Iran. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? We have zero gay in Iran. <laughs> this will give you an idea how those countries function. We have no gays in Iran. I mean, have you ever heard of a country don't have gays, especially in Iran? So those countries, anything they provide in their TV, it has to be the shiny image. The king. I remember, you know, I remember. Let's change the topic just for fun. The king of Saudi Arabia is coming from the airplane. Now, his majesty. Now he's coming from the airplane. He's waving. He's waving his hand. His right, his right leg is taking the first step. He's coming in the second step. And now he's waving again. He look at the left. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, our king, you are, you are back. Now he is in the third step and the fourth step. And he and, and look at this beautiful smile. I mean, this is the news. And then at the end of the news about the king, which is nothing but taking the stairs of the airplane, they, they said nothing about what he did. It's just about he is taking the stairs of the airplane. That's the news. And then now the weather news. If you hear the weather news, you will die laughing. A brother and sister, Alhamdulillah, tomorrow, if Allah will, we might have wind in the speed of a 20 kilometer an hour. If, I remember, if Allah will. And if Allah will, we might have some cloud. But if Allah will, we might have some rain. I mean, the guy, he don't dare to say two words without saying if Allah will, because they will kill him. Even weather news is dangerous. He has to say, inshallah, every second he says something, because they will say, oh, he's a prophet sign about tomorrow. He's a claiming to be a prophet, kill him. So he has to say, inshallah. So you, you watch the weather news, you are not watching weather news, you are watching Insha'Allah news. <clears throat> that is the story, Insha'Allah news. And how you can hear news based on Insha'Allah. Not only their news is based on Insha'Allah, even their work. You have a hole in the street in the front of your house. You call the city. A hey, city, my address is etc. My name is etc. And the street of etc. We have big hole. The children are filling in it. You came here to fix the sewage and you did not cover it. They say to you, Brother, inshallah, we will fix it. Okay. You call a year after. I called you last year and I asked you to come and fix this hole. Children, there's a child. He way fell down and we almost he died. A brother, didn't we tell you last year, inshallah, what's wrong with you? And then a year ago, actually, there's a picture I saw in Facebook, honest to God. There's a picture I saw a while ago about a guy taking a picture of him when he was a child for a hole in the street. And then he took a picture of him when he is 30 years old in the same spot and the same hole still exists. Because we will fix it, inshallah. 25 years, God knows how many years after his childhood passed, still the hole is not fixed. And maybe, maybe 60 years from now. And now they are fighting Corona by inshallah. <clears throat> Anyway, I say we pray to the Lord for the safety of all people. 
and uh, we pray that all of us uh, we will be strong in the in the hard time and for me i i pray that the lord will take will, will take my my life as as soon as he can for this life really is not worth it for me and uh, uh, for me i believe that what i can do i did already and i will keep doing what i can do as much as i can but i am not really attached to this life uh, i am attached to the life with my lord and i am i will be so happy to go and be with him anytime as soon as possible so we pray for the lord for safety for all mankind we pray for the muslim to be safe we pray for all christians hindu jews and those who believe and those who don't believe we believe that we should pray for peace we should pray that a human being can see the truth that he is not or nothing without god we pray that people they will wake up and corona will be a great message even though it's a message of death and sad a sad message but sometime uh, a human being need to wake up and need to see the truth i always recommend people to go from time to time to graveyard graveyard will make you see exactly where you are going to belong is going to make you wake up a human being is obsessed with food clothing price uh, gadget uh, cameras beauty madness but my friend time goes so fast yesterday I was a kid today I'm not and the same for you time is extremely fast you will not believe it how fast is going to be before you became 60 and 70 and 80 if you live to that age so I advise you to take advantage of the time so you can prepare for your coming journey this life is like somebody is working as a farmer to collect fruits and this fruit is going to be his food for the coming journey people they do the opposite people in this life they spend their life eating the fruits which they did not even farm themselves and when the new journey come, they have no fruit with them. Which means they will not have the eternal life. So we advise people to take advantage of their time. Time is a priceless and me, I hope I'm not wasting my time. You know, as you see, as soon as I can, even my voice is tired. I see my chest is tired from talking too much. My throat is dry, but yet I believe that, you know, I cannot resist. I cannot resist really to come and school those people and get them busted so they can see the truth and we can save them the purpose is not just to get you busted getting you busted to save you it's like somebody beating you know let us say uh, 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 you, you have a blanket full of dust and garbage and then you hit it not because you don't want to destroy the blanket but because you want to clean it and this is exactly what we want to do with the muslims we love them we don't hate them and this is goes for everybody not only the muslims it's time for us as a christians to wake up and to follow the messiah and and this is what you see why i get upset from a christian when i find them fighting between catholic and protestant that you are being silly you are truly being silly you are not you are far from christ instead of being busy following christ bringing people to christ you are debating over stupid things Don't waste your time. Christ, he asked you, he said, go and teach and preach. What do you do? Go and debate about things will not change anything. Two Christians debating about the communion. But both of them, they believe in the communion. But the, 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 the argument now what? That this uh, uh, wine or juice Jesus he drank, is it going to be turned really blood? Or it is metaphorical? What this debate is about? Useless. What about the time you spend discussing this topic? You take it to bring someone to Christ. So you can be blessed by the Lord for saving a soul. And this is why I get upset from those who claim to be Christians, but that they are dividing the Christians. A real Christian, he loves his enemy. What about we love our brothers and sisters in Christ? He's a Catholic, he's a Protestant, who cares? He's Orthodox, so what? 
They believe exactly in what you believe. And your differences is three differences. 90% of it is based on politics. There's people, they want to divide us because from dividing us, they make business. This is their business, to divide you. Those who preach unity with Christ is the one who follow Christ. You do not need to be genius to know. If we ask Jesus right now, the Messiah, our Lord, do you like to see Christians divided? He will say, no, I assure you. Focus in the truth. Focus in reality. If somebody believes that Jesus, he is his Savior, he is his God, he died in the cross, he believed in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, he believed that the Messiah is coming back, he believed that there is no salvation but by him. He believed that only him is called as God, the Savior who came in earth as a son of God. So what the problem? He have a Pope. Forget about his Pope. If they don't worship, even they don't worship their Pope. Oh, they have an icon. Well, okay, they have an icon, my friend. I mean, hypocrisy is amazing. You will find somebody debating somebody about God but he have a girlfriend sleeping with her and he want to tell him that you cannot have an icon you remember in the Bible it says before you see the little thing in your the eye of your brother what about you look at the tree you have a big tree in your eye but he didn't see it Debate somebody don't believe in Jesus. Don't believe that he is Savior. Don't believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But don't debate with someone he is a believer in Christ. Even if he is wrong in something, as long as it's not about salvation, he is okay. Because maybe you are wrong, not him. Jesus said, whoever believe in me and I will live, Okay, what if we go to a farmer who does not know how to write, how to read? So what we will debate him about? The farmer, he say, I believe Jesus is my savior. Is he saved? Yes, he is. What if this farmer, he have an icon of Jesus in his house? Is he going to go to hell? No. Because even that, he have it because he loved Jesus, not because he hate him. If it's wrong, all of us will do wrong. If there is any one of us here don't do wrong we do wrong but his wrong is better than our wrong at least he is not doing what we do his wrongdoing is love for God even his wrongdoing is love for God yet it's wrong but still it's way better than our wrong so what a human being does Sometimes it's disgusting. When I see a woman in a village, I've been in, in villages in many countries, and you see a woman, honestly, they are saint, those people. You know what saint? They are really saint. Those people who live in villages in high mountains, far away from everybody, they are saint compared to our corruption, the corruption of a human being these days. In there, if you look at their door, they open the door for you. They don't ask you, who are you? Big smile. Even though you are a foreigner, stranger here, a person come to your door, you get scared. Who is this guy? What do you want? You have security camera in the corners because you're afraid for everything around you is corrupt. They don't have security cameras. You go to their houses, they give you the best food they have with big smile. And they are poor, extremely poor. So which one of them is really Christian? The one who understands every sentence in the gospel or just the one who is simple and believe that Jesus is God?
If you remember, there is a person who was next to Jesus in the cross. He understand nothing about the Bible. If you quote him one verse, he will not know it. He just believed that Jesus is his Savior. In the cross. Did Jesus accept him? Yes, he did. He promised him heaven. The guy, he did not study the Bible. He did not even get baptism. He was not from the disciple, and actually he was wanted. He believed. He is not philosopher in the Bible. He doesn't have education. He doesn't have a PhD. He is not doctor, etc. in the gospel. But he was a promise heaven before you and before me. That is God, my friend. So if if you think to have salvation in Christ is to have understanding for every like you have to have a bit you know a scholar in the Bible that's not that's not what the Bible is about that's not what God is asking you for this is why the Messiah was speaking in parable why because maybe 99% of mankind they are simple people average their education is limited so he speak to them in parable so they might understand in a very simple way you will notice always the messiah speaking as if he is telling a story but the story is very deep what is the purpose of the parables so the simple one of us and the one who is deep in education intelligence both of them they will enjoy it the story is made in a certain way which it doesn't matter how high or how low your education is you would love it not like the Quran singing words they have no meaning very well made parables deep you need actually to think about it maybe years before you can write something if you can write something like this and then if you are a person who is your you know i'm reading the gospel for how long years and years and years but each time i read the bible i discover something new as if i did not read this book before situation today I am different today I have my own pain today this book work with my pain it's like a doctor who educate you or let us say he update his medicine your sickness today is different from your sickness last year so you will see that the world speak to you today different from what the world spoke to you a year before why the world never changed but because this is an amazing words of God spiritual deep with a solution for your heart they walk with you in your lifetime so when you are a kid you understand something when you are older you see something else when you are old and older, you get more and more deeper. This is why I advise you, actually, all of you. And now we have this corona. Uh, actually, we are here. Because, uh, I mean, uh, the number is growing of people watching because of corona. So do we say thank you, corona? <laughs> right thank you corona but uh, no we don't thank corona but anyway a glory to his name uh, the Lord he said every two of you meet and remember me I will be between them which means he will be the third 
So right now we are speaking about him. He is listening. He is watching us. He knew us, every one of us, by his name. All right. Look like we are. Uh, we don't have any Muslims here. So guys, I don't know if tomorrow morning. I will try tomorrow morning to be here. But I'm telling you from now, I feel a little bit. Uh, I have a little headache. I spoke. You know. You know. I don't know if we well, speak too much, too much, too much. Usually I don't feel this way, but today I feel a little bit tired from speaking too much. So if I can tomorrow, it's going to be in the morning as as today. If not, we will see. Just you know, you will see me posting. I will do my best to to go live tomorrow morning. If not, then that's mean I'm taking a break because I'm a little bit getting tired. I want to say thank you all for being here. I want to say I want to say thank you for our brother Sam Shamoon for joining us and please if you can support our brother Sam Shamoon by donation or any way any mean this uh, this brother he deserve it uh, he's very passionate um, and there's no none of us is perfect so don't expect him to be perfect why why he will be perfect i mean he is just like any one of us like sometimes com people complain that he is he go angry sometimes look look okay, normal you see actually when somebody he have so much love he get angry faster he have he is so passionate so he get mad so fast so he don't have patient you better have the patient support him he need your patient He's a good man, and always good men, they go through a very tough time. Actually, I never saw somebody, he devote a lot of his time to serve the Lord, and he don't suffer. I never met one. The devil will make your life extremely difficult. If you open Playboy Station, money will come from everywhere. You will have a palace. He will have all the glory of a playboy, she is a Satan glory. You go with God, especially if you are truthful, then you will see someone like Sam Shamoon. A Muslim may making fun of him, saying you are homeless. Why? Because the poor guy supposedly don't have a house. Well, this is a if you don't have a house, that's witness that he is really serving God. That's not against him. That a certificate for someone like him that he is a good man. Right? So those who can support him, please support him. He is our brother in Christ and he always... Uh, I'm, I'm, he did not ask, uh, ask me. I never say... I, I never do say things people ask me to do. Actually, if he asked me to do that, I will not say it. I'm saying it from my own. If you can support him, support him. All right. Uh, well, I just say that Sam, he don't have too much patience, so you should have patience. You see, uh, there is there is a teaching is a gift, right? Sam Shamoon, he has a gift. He has a very strong memory. He is sharp. He is smart. He is a fast thinker. You notice that right away? You know, you say something to him, right away he caught for you the verse, he caught it so that it's all right, he caught and, and he explained it very well. That is a gift. But nobody's perfect. He loses his patience fast. And he's, he, he, he himself, he admit, he has said, forgive me guys, I, I lose my patience. So this is not something in his hand. You cannot judge him for that. Judge him for the good fruit he gave. Isn't it enough that he is a warrior explaining the Bible from all his heart and do a lot of work? Do you know how many articles he wrote? Do you know how much work those articles need of thinking and be careful and etc.? I mean, that's a lot of work. So don't appreciate the bad about me. Appreciate the good about me. 
and I'm talking about Sam here because every one of us have something I mean we, nobody is perfect my friend the Messiah our Lord he flipped the tables on people because they don't follow God this person have a lot of passionate so he flipped the table maybe all the time but not because he's bad but because he have too much love and passionate for the Lord do you understand me people have different level of patient and some of us we are blessed with a lot of patience some of us we don't Right. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I want to say uh, thank you guys for being here, and again, uh, I hope I will be able to see you tomorrow. Uh, just watch for my coming broadcast. Subscribe if you did not yet, uh, and uh, uh, we pray for your safety, all of you. Watch for this virus. Be careful. Wash your hands. And actually, I'm thinking to make a video about some things, mistakes we do. Maybe I will do it in the quality of life about this virus. Because, you know, people, they go and they do shopping and then they go and they wash their hands. But the bags you just brought with you, they can carry the virus, especially if they are plastic bags. This virus can live in the plastic for almost three days or even four. So when you buy those stuff and you come home before you wash your hands you should move all the supply you have out of the plastic bags put it in a place leave it alone for some time so the virus will die like for me i do shopping i leave my stuff i did shopping you remember i told you i went to walmart i think I did shopping maybe a week ago. I have the stuff there. I did not touch them. Week. Because they are coming in plastic bags. I do not need to eat them right away. So why do I want to touch them? I brought them. I, I left them in the corner. I wash my hands. So now if I go and touch them again, no virus will be alive all those days. Especially if you have your own yard, you can put them in the sun. This virus cannot live for long in the sun dry weather hot sun will kill it so if you have a yard you buy your stuff leave it outside in the yard leave them as as long as you can uh, you go outside you shake hands and then you go uh, you, you know you have your key cars uh, the, the, the keys for your car those are, are touching them so the key of the car should not stay in touch with you the second you enter the house, put it in a place and nobody should touch it. Then you go wash your hands. And when you wash your hands, you have to wash the faucet, the one you touch, you remember? Because you open the faucet from that thing, right? So you touch it now and your hand is still dirty. So if you wash your hand now, and then you touch this faucet again, the one you, 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 you open the water for it, the virus is there. So when you come from outside you have to wash the faucet after you wash your hands for you touch the faucet before you start washing your hands which means your hand is still dirty you know what i mean because when you go inside the house what you do you go to, to the to the sink okay what do you do you open the water and then you wash your hands and then you go dry your hand but what about the thing you touch to open the water you you just you you just make it dirty so you have to wash that handle otherwise you did nothing and then your child come and touch it he opened the water to drink or to wash something so you have to be careful think smart like what i did now you know which can bring the virus with me especially if you have family you know if you have even old people in the house you have your parents 
You know, you have to be careful to think for them. All right. Um, anyway, thank you guys for being here. Uh, we, we, we will make a video about it maybe. And I will see you again. Christ is our Lord, our Savior, and He is our provider. See you and God bless.